we join the world of Pantheon at the end of an era. While victorious in the Trojan War, Greece has lost the lives of its most treasured heroes. Ajax, Patroclus, Achilles and Odysseus, dead or missing. Rival powers on the Mediterranean prepare their armies so that they may herald in a new age, born from the darkness of the inevitable war to come. Rome in the West offers its conquered subjects the solidity of civilization and the promise of a future. Egypt in the South tempts with its mysteries of the arcane and grand wonders that cast ominous shadows across its vast deserts. Persia in the East gifts an opportunity to serve a god emperor and receive the blessing of his generous boons. And in the North, the barbaric Gauls rise in defiance, protecting their freedom with axe in hand. Which empire thrives and which falls? The smallest of choices could lead to the gravest of consequences. In this time of uncertainty, a dais of Eritrea has sent word across Greece and beyond, a summons to all those that would see themselves a hero, a summons to anyone who can inspire the Greeks to defend their homeland. Here in Eritrea, the Pythia, the Oracle of Delphi, patiently waits to anoint those that she prophesizes will change the world. Here in Eritrea, our story begins. Oh my gosh. Ha! Well, <laughs> welcome back everybody. Lawful, stupid, role-playing games. Tuning in here, returning for the second season of Pantheon. And if you're like me, if you're like any of the players here, or if you're like any of the viewers here, I know you've gone search far and wide to the farthest stretches of the horizon in search of another podcast that is like Pantheon, yet you've returned to us. Because there is no other podcast like Pantheon. <laughs> I welcome you back like the prodigal son for season two, where we will engage in the, myst in the mysteries of the Aegean Ocean. <laughs> but before we get into that, some announcements to be made. On behalf of LSRPG community, of which you are all welcome at any time to join on Discord to take part in our one-shots and even one day become one part of our streaming campaigns as DM or player. So, the first thing and the most important thing is that tomorrow at 7pm, the newest campaign in Lawful Stupid RPG will launch. A terrifying world belonging to my own player, Zach, as the DM. It's not terrifying in the slightest. It is horrifying <laughs> to even the most hardened veteran. It'll be horrifying because it's so bad, but I don't know the if it'll be. Sound of party foul sends <laughs> grown men running for their mothers. In the fear <laughs> it invokes, it sends small children crying. But no, it's not terrifying. It's good fun. Anyway, that's tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern. So do remember to tune in for that. Uh, I would like to give a few thank yous to both Multi Music and, of course, Tabletop Audio for the music provided in today's session. They help out small channels like ours with free music, free copyright music, and Multi Music only has 2,000 subscribers on YouTube, and they are fantastic. So if you own a small channel, I would definitely recommend going to them and looking for music of your own. But more LSRPG stuff, we have a new website, and it is going to feature a webcomic written by professional comedians and illustrated by professional artists. And I've heard small rumors so far that it is something to behold. So do make sure to keep in track of that because I certainly am myself and I look forward to seeing what comes of it. But I think that's pretty much everything. So without further ado, welcome back to the ancient world of Greece, Rome, Persia, Egypt, Britannia and Rome. And here we are, we stand among our party. Much has happened in the prelude since last session, in last season, I should say now. Those who are loyal viewers will remember that the party traveled to Argos, the home of Yarlink. There they found the town overcome with an elusive and mysterious menace. It wasn't long before the party discovered that lycanthropy was to blame and they tracked the source down to an old temple of Artemis where they found Lupar, who had been experimenting with magics beyond his control. The fruits of those magics 
gave birth to one of the most mythical of creatures, the chimera that burst from the mountain behind Argus and made its way over the land, but nothing has been heard since in the three days that have passed. And over the course of those three days, much has happened. Kara, our druid, who was previously infected with the were-rat lycanthropy disease, fortunately found a cure with the priestesses of Artemis, going there and explaining her weakness, her illness, her curse. They managed to cure her. And therefore, Kara, you are free from lycanthropy. How do you feel? <laughs> so much better. Good, good. Lycanthropy can be a burden on the fatigue. It's good that you're feeling better from the lycanthropy. Get well soon. Um, Appreciate it. Yeah, okay. Other things that have happened. I believe, Pruitt, you wanted to turn in Lupar to Argos for the crimes that he'd committed and his experimentation with magics out of his control. Yeah, so I, I turned in Lupar, uh, Lupar and just uh, basically, I amidst the chaos of the city, I just prioritize him having a trial and uh, being punished um, before anything else could happen anything else bad could happen indeed you turned lupar in but due to your prior commitments you're compelled to go back to athens the results of any trial that you've committed are thus far unknown perhaps he will be punished perhaps not thus is the judgment of the people of argus not yourself but in the meantime everyone else has made a trip back to athens that's taken the better part of three days and it's only upon reaching those glorious gates, that ominous, monolithic acropoli upon which the Parthenon sits and the gods stare down, that you find yourselves at the southern gate of the city. And wandering in, as though a great weight has been lifted from her shoulders, a woman in immaculate blue and gold silks will lift herself from a cart and hurry herself over to you, the party. We'll change music a bit, because changing music is always fun. <laughs> so, party, making your way into Athens, it is the same um, same scene you're most use, used to by now. Many people of all different nationalities, all different empires of the ancient world, mill themselves around, Egyptians, Gauls, even some Britannians you see, Kara. But it is the person who's come up to you that takes immediate presentation. The woman in the blue and gold silks, as she immediately latches onto you, Antigonus. And she even asks you by name. She simply says, oh, oh are you Antigonus? Yes, and, and the party that which Antigonus belongs to? Um, yeah, so um, that's me, sure. <clears throat> oh, well, I've been told to look out for you for many days now, perhaps two or three days to await your return. I've been sent by, and she looks left and right to people sort of perceiving on the street before she leans in and whispers into your ear only, Aspasia. I see, yes, very good. Um, we've been a bit busy. It's been quite a journey back. Sorry you had to keep waiting. Uh, this is the rest of the party, Herodotus, Pruitt, Kara, uh, as well oh. as um, yes, yes. Our, our other I friend. Know. I know all your names. I know all your names, please. Aspasia has told me much about you. I, she's asked me to wait here, and upon your return, I will escort you to Piraeus, where she has something waiting for you. Ah, well, um, you look nice enough and you said the right thing, so I'll follow you. Indeed. Well, the rest of your party, perhaps. I hope they trust me as well. Please, we have a cart prepared. If you would like to sit in it as we escort you, it is more than welcome. Oh, yes, sure. I was going to go get some breakfast, but I suppose this is important. So uh, come along, everyone. Come along. Come along. Uh, where, where did she say she's escorting us, Harry? Piraeus. Piraeus. Is that somewhere Piraeus. in Athens? Piraeus is adjoined to Athens by the Long Wall. The Long Wall is a defensive uh, technique provided against Sparta um, <laughs> provided for the Pelop well what may become eventually to blows with Sparta the long wall joins the two cities of Athens and Piraeus uh, there is a very small highway upon which many of you travelled before so far uh, the docks of Piraeus are very valuable to Athens for transporting food and goods into the city and Athens has constructed a peculiar defence around both cities in which 
a wall spans the perimeter of Athens and then splits off, sort of cordoning a highway, all the way to another town, which is by the coast, which is Piraeus, which is also walled. So effectively, there are two walled towns with a walled road, walled road between. And it's here that you will find Piraeus, the dock city, the dock town that is adjoined to Athens. So then she will waste no time sending us off. This is good. Were you bored, Pruitt? I know that you uh, you get bored very easily. <laughs> yes, I confess I've been uh, <clears throat> antsy lately, but yes. Yeah, you look a little different. Uh, you know, maybe we maybe you've got stronger or really sunk into that whole uh, <laughs> tribal thing that you're trying out. Well, uh, it's... I wouldn't call it tribal, but certainly my armor was ruined in the last battle, so I guess you'll be seeing more chest. <laughs> yes, I, w I was trying to be nice, but I meant mostly that your chest hair is kind of everywhere. It's uh, it's a, it's really aggressive. Oh, he seems a lot more angry. Ah, uh, yeah, th uh, that too. Uh, Kara, are you coming along? Yes, of course. Oh. Well, you're cheery today. Very good. Uh, last time we were here, they found something in the water, something strange, so I don't know what's left. Uh, maybe there'll be a surprise for us. Maybe they solve the mystery. Indeed, the cart upon which you all begin to sit rolls forth at a steady pace, a very comfortable pace, uh, hauled by two donkeys. The morning sun of the Athens area um, beats down on you. It's quite hot today. Um, you can see many people have already started uh, wiping their brows as you make your way along, slaves the most part, otherwise Athenian citizens making their way, um, sort of coating themselves in water when they get the chance. But as you pass them, you do round the walls to the perimeter of Athens, um, going around the long way around the Acropoli, over to the walls, the long walls to Piraeus, and you eventually find yourself on a very straight highway, which um, leads you to Piraeus. So, sorry about that. Hit my microphone. Um, but yeah, uh, so on the way to Piraeus, um, you don't see much going on this way. It is the same Athenian day. Uh, although your absence has um, coaxed some rather drastic events in the other sides of Greece, Athens seems unperturbed, like um, a rock upon an ocean of chaos. It seems to be uncaring of the um, troubles going on in other parts of Greece. It seems to be its own entity. And here you see people going about normal business, many coming your way, many going the other. As the cart makes its way down to Piraeus, the port city, um, there you see uh, a fantastic amount of docks, dozens, perhaps a hundred at least, um, carting the way along the coast of Athens. And here you see several, um, mostly trade ships coming from different parts of different empires, bringing exotic goods and delicacies to Athens, but also warships on the far end. And it is to the far end that your cart diverts have we been down this way before? I don't think so. Okay. We only went to the docks to go find um, Herodotus. Yeah, correct. Yeah, the 20-mile dock journey, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. It was, it was a long way. And no dogs. <laughs> and no dogs. <laughs> no dogs yet. No dogs yet. Uh, as we're traveling, I will just sort of like lean to the woman and say, um, so you going to surprise us when we get there? Or are we just going to show up and what, uh, you can tell us what's going on? Uh, Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Aspasia told me to keep my lips sealed. I see. Well, we love secrets, especially Aspasian secrets. Uh, I... Not a secret. A surprise. Uh, but don't tell her I said that. Well, I feel like you kind of ruined it now, so... Uh, uh, well, I, might as well tell me everything since it's, you ruined it's it. Not, it's not. It's not. It's <laughs> nothing to worry about. It is an amazing surprise. She has prepared a ginormous surprise for you. Like size ginormous, or like my heart will swell ginormously. It's like a ship ginormous. Imagine a surprise the size of a ship. It's that size. It's but a. Don't, uh, it's, but don't it's tell a, her I said this. It's a ship. She's. She got us a ship. Well, it's a it's a surprise the size of a ship. I, I couldn't comment if it is a ship or not. Oh damn it. I wanted to chill in Athens for a chill is not a thing, but I wanted to stay <laughs> for a while. But it, I guess she wants us to work already. Oh uh, it is it is well I let her explain. We're almost there, perhaps five more minutes. And oh, fine. Um, 
She'll go back down to the man ca- guiding the cart and whisper him to hurry up. And indeed, he sort of rears back on the reins. And the cart takes a bit more gusto towards the northern part of the Piraeus docks. It's and... horsepower. <laughs> indeed. Donkey power in this sense, I think you'll find. <laughs> right. But uh, still, you do make your way there. And uh, it's not long before you come across what seems to be um, a cordoned off dock with not many people bothered about it. There is an over-constructed warehouse above it. It's more like a roof on stilts than a building. You are led through it on your carts and you can feel the warming, the warming would be the wrong word, the cooling shade sort of taking over the cart as you pass through until you are led out onto um, a cordon, a cordon a sectioned off part of a stone docks upon which there is a large stone jetty and either side of the stone jetty, there are two giant wooden pillars being built with a smaller wooden beam going across the top of them, attached to which there is a cloth that is being attached. And um, at the base of which you see several construction workers working on this, what seems to be giant curtain. Um, but the person directing them is the familiar visage of Aspasia herself, pointing at the uh, several bits of curtain that need to be attached. And um, But she doesn't seem to notice your approach as the car pulls to a halt. <laughs> She wants us to owe her. This is why I took money and not a not a gift, not a service. But now, if she gives us this boat... <sighs> what, we'll have exactly what we want and be able to do what we need to do? That's the, that's the problem? No, she'll expect us to do her bidding. This is what I'm worried about. As long as we all agree right now that this relationship ends as soon as we find ferocities and bring them mm-hmm. to justice... Mm-hmm. Uh, this relationship for me is currently doing exactly what I want to do, so I don't know. I kind of like gifts. <laughs> so you will let her plan work? Great. Just great. Let's see the boat. Hey, all I asked for was a dog. That's true. I feel bad she hasn't given you yours. I don't even know if she's done my thing yet, but anyway, <laughs> seemed nice to me. I can't even remember what I asked for. <laughs> 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 I'm you... not sure I remember either. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. you got to remember some stuff. Uh, I, I remember it just... Uh, it's funny because he basically asked her help to get his memory back. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can see that. The irony. The irony. I remember. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> yeah, um, we, we get out of the cart. So does she look like she's, like, really telling them what to do as if she knows how to build a boat or... Um, no, she's, she's like not. the politician in the ad. Like, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, pointing. yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Either to cut the ribbon or... Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> part, you know, are... people who know how to do exactly what they already know how to do, so... Yeah. <laughs> awesome. More an unwelcome addition to a building sign. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Aspasia, you called for us. You I hope you have breakfast ready. And uh, she looks over her shoulder at you, and then she you can see her, like, look back towards the ocean... Uh, there is a moment in which she makes some kind of expression, um, some kind of droop shoulders and a bit of a sigh of annoyance before she composes herself and turns around with a smile that you would assume was the most natural thing ever. And she says, ah, welcome back to Athens. I've eagerly awaited your return. How, how was the trip to Argos? Uh, to be honest, it... Um... Well, it could have been better. It could have been worse. I don't know. What would you say, Kara? I'm not sure how it gets much worse than unleashing a giant evil on the world, but maybe. Um, Unleashing a giant evil upon the world? Well, Well, we didn't do it. We just. We we sent a message via the Shrine of Hermes to Athens, but um, with some of the important information, but we have the details. I see. Well, we've heard of no giant evil in Athens just yet, but if it is something we should be worried about, I do expect you to tell me soon enough. <laughs> um, well, you'll excuse this. And rather than the actual ship being constructed, what she's actually been constructing seems to be um, a giant unveiling curtain uh, before the ship. Um, and she looks across, but it is not yet complete, and you can see the ship behind it. And she was like, uh, she just sort of says, uh, ignore this. It is just um, 
pageantry. <laughs> I wanted to surprise you, but it seems my associate has got you a bit too early and brought you here before the curtain was complete. Before <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> oh, she didn't tell us we were having a curtain. She said something <laughs> about a ship. Well, <laughs> I see every surprise I had in mind has at least been revealed. And she'll look at the uh, sort of attendant that met you at the gates with a very stern, cold gaze. At which point she turns her head and sort of hides it. Oh, oh was I not meant to say something? It's very well, Herodotus. I suppose we should concern ourselves with pragmatism rather than pageantry. Yes, it is true. I have bought you a ship. And not just any ship. The ship is made from wood from the Dodoan forest. It is exceptionally at the peak of Athenian technology. It is a ship that will carve through other triremes on the ocean like a butter. And I instantly welcome you to admire it. And indeed, she'll look up to the top person attaching the curtain and she'll just say, drop the curtain, there's no more need. <laughs> and the He'll just look down with a bit of confusion. He'll just, and without doing the thing, and she'll just look up again and say, Drop the curtain, there's no one in! I'll look up and uh, it was a nice curtain. <laughs> curtain just drops to the ground. A simple white curtain just falls. And indeed, just behind it, you see what looks to be some kind of trireme. Uh, many of you are familiar with the structure of a trireme. It is two sails. One above the very bow, one above in the very center. A large trireme with the symbol of a lyre upon the um, upon the sail. A lyre, for those who are not aware, is like a, um, a harp, very primordial harp type thing. Um, she'll cast her hand in a wide arcing motion to this magnificent ship. You can see already from the sort of thickness and sturdiness of the wood that this is a vessel to behold. More magnificent than any ship that sailed to Troy during the war. This thing is something that is different. It seems confident. If you can ascribe such an adjective to a simple structure, simple structure that moves, this thing seems like it is filled with the power that is needed to sail the Aegean without any any perturbance from the gods or any horrible nefarious creature behind the ocean. Um, but yeah, she will sort of look back to you and give a sort of sly, confident smile and say, well, what do you think? It's, um, it's gorgeous, but I do not know how to sail it. Ah. Sort of look over to everybody else, like... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lovely gift, but does it come with the crew? As a ship is a ship, and uh, I will admit this is a ship. <laughs> Pericles thought my counsel in things to come and I said to him I trust these I've sent to Argos and I want to give them a gift that they can help us more in Argos and indeed he has offered me many drachmi to make sure that you are looked after and indeed what I have here is your ship the Cylon it is called and of course he has afforded me to buy the ship from its current owner and with him the 120 slaves that crew it and his name is and she just thinks to herself and she sort of rubs her head and says Ation, Arion, Asa. what is your name and she'll look back over her shoulder to the to the docks itself um to a man clad all in black tunics and robes and hood so, Aethon, would you like to describe yourself? Sure. I know. <laughs> Leaning on some of the uh, the barrels on the dock, uh, he'll kind of step up, uh, straighten out this tunic. He's got this black tunic with a little bit of a, a slightly not shiny gold, but just kind of uh, gilded thread that runs through. Um, and he's got uh, black sandals and a, and a hood that goes around the back, but is currently not over his head. Uh, and he'll step forward. Uh, yes, Athlon is the name. A pleasure to meet you all. Ah, uh, indeed. Uh, it's a nice ship. Why'd you sail? Why, why did you sell it? <laughs> uh, as one sells things for money, I suppose. Hmm. Well, I uh, hope we take care of it and that your crew is good enough to keep us alive, because that's really all I care about at this point. Oh, uh, uh, do not worry. I will be uh, joining you on the ship. I, I didn't plan on leaving it. 
So still kind of mine, but yours to use. To coin a phrase, Aspasia interrupts. <laughs> I have bought the ship, but I have put in, how to say, a managing director. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, to coin a phrase at the very Ancient least. Ancient Greek poetry right there. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You get you get the same <laughs> the same dynamic applies here though you know what I mean right so <laughs> she's bought a ship she knows you can't command a ship therefore she has bought the ship's captain as well mm. um so with that um she has allowed you to have a crew and a captain not only a ship itself because as you said and as she agrees a ship without a crew is not enough and indeed now you have this and she will say to you each of you Athan here. Is it Athon? Athon? Uh, depends on the pronunciation, where you are. And I am in Greece, so the pronunciation is? As with Athon, it would be Athon. Athon? Yes. I expect you to get very acquainted with this here, your new... Let's call them your new... Hmm, escortees. Very I good. expect them to get to their places protected and you to be responsible for the protection of them. They will suffer no harm on my ship, that I assure you. Mm. Um, Nick, any uh, indications from Athon's appearance that would indicate military experience? Um, nothing quite. Uh, he doesn't even seem to be wearing really any armor. Uh, it's more like common clothes and some uh, dark cloths uh, that kind of uh, obscure uh, anything you'd be wearing or concealing underneath. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Aspasia, you said that the ship is crewed by slaves. Who owns these slaves? Why, well, you do, of course, as it is your ship. How you treat them is your prerogative, Kara. I understand slavery is not a common practice across the world, but Slaves in Athens are quite content, and if you treat them well, quite loyal. I imagine that's what everyone with slaves says uh, mm. to justify the... Kara, uh, I would just like to clarify. I know that uh, the Druids in the North, they practice things differently, but slavery uh, is different a little bit in Greece and Rome than it is in other places. It is more indentured servitude. They are working off a debt that they took out usually. So once the debt is paid off, indeed, they are yeah, receiving, nothing. they are receiving an absent wage. Let's put it that way. They do not work as you would commonly expect a slave to for free. They do receive a wage then. They receive recompense for their debts paid. Well, I would like to see that these recompenses are notified and you know, bureaucratically stamped or whatever the hell it is you people do because I'm not letting, making them work for free. As long as that's going on and they're willing to do this, then uh, sure, mm-hmm. bring them along. Very interesting, Antigonus. Have you ever tried to row a trireme without a slave? I've never tried to row a trireme at all. <laughs> well, then I suppose you would not know. Believe me, a trireme is a difficult, uh, difficult vessel to handle. You will need slaves, and believe me, this is slave work. There can be no lying about this. This is not work for a citizen or any man belonging to any city-state. It is very difficult and very long in the day, and it is common for a slave. All the more reason they deserve recompense. If you wish to pay them yourselves, you are welcome to. Fine, we'll handle it ourselves. Um... All right. Well, Mr. Athon, how when how soon can we leave? Uh, as soon as you would like, I, I, I guess. Um, if you have business here in the city, uh, I'm at your beck and call. Do what you will. Well, I need a new tunic, and I think Antignus had a play to see, so it's going to be at least another day. Oh, oh, yes. I need to also do some investigation for Herodotus. Uh, and if you need any additional crew for any uh, special uh, techniques or skills, um, we can find those in the city. I will accompany you. How much uh, do we have in terms of supply? Uh, we don't know how long we may be gone. Hmm. Uh, current stock may be uh, week two if you push it, but we can uh, stock up here. 
That's good. I would make that your first task. And um, yes, I think that Kara, you uh, you have a date that you owe someone too, correct? No. <laughs> oh, yes, you, I, yes, you do. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Even Herodotus <laughs> remembers. <laughs> Are you referring to? I think you're referring to. <laughs> was I believe his name was Cadius? Erebus. Erebus. Was it Cadius? Oh, Erebus. Right. Erebus. Erebus. Yes. Cadius was the other one. Antigonus, I told you, you are going to accompany me if I have to go see that play with that soldier. Of course, I would not miss the play at all, but I certainly wouldn't miss you having to go with him as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rare chuckle have from Antigonus. we just forget about him? The problem is he happens to have some secret information that we really don't want to get to the Athenian guard anytime soon, so we need to make well, bygones. What if he's already told them? Well, I guess we should go visit and see. Uh, well, <laughs> it would be going I say, um, Antigone, let's make me a perception check. Okay. Not great. Four plus five, nine. Mm -hmm. Don't see anything that's particularly triggering your uh, perceptiveness at the current moment in time, unfortunately. No, not at all. I don't know if this is metagaming too much, but I had put in a recommendation for this same person to become part of his uh, Aspasia's crew, so I'm just going to look around and see if he is around. <laughs> okay, I'll allow another perception roll. The final of the rolls for this right. particular jack. Yeah. Oh, it's halfway decent. 11 plus stuff. Plus stuff. I need to know what that stuff is, man. I'm, I'm looking it up. I'm looking it <laughs> up. Uh, 16. <laughs> 16, okay, yeah. You'll see at the sign of um, Erebus's name, you'll see Aspasia sort of raise an eyebrow and sort of give sort of a small chuckle to herself. Then she'll cover it with him with a hand. I want to know if Erebus has told her what we were up to earlier, or did we tell her what we were up to? Earlier? No, we didn't tell her what we were up to earlier. There's no <laughs> check. There's no check for that one, unfortunately. Oh, there is a check. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh... Okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. But but she do, uh, she does chuckle. I don't see Erebus she, though. She responds to the name of Erebus. Okay. You can see her body shift at the sound of the name. You don't see him anywhere though. No. Okay. Fair enough. Hmm. Well, uh, we did take down where his house is, and Kara, likely you will need a local to help you find the right dog for, uh, for uh, what was his name? supposed to be finding me a dog. Ah, well, Kara, I have good news on that regard. Um, but I would like to discuss it with you in private. Certainly. Very well. How about then. now? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, if you wish to excuse your party, I would be happy to discuss it with you. Why don't you go get to know Athon a little better and we'll be... I believe his name was pronounced right Athon. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm not from around here. <laughs> Depends yes, Britannian might be pronounced differently after all. Um, yes, and I, I need to know how to buy a ticket to a play. Well, <laughs> you can just show up for the place. They are not... The most the last, the only the intellectuals really go. What play is it you wish to see? Oh well, I, I was just I got a flyer and I pull out the flyer that I got and you wish on to the see way. Agamemnon. Do you wish to see? No. Uh, it's a play by uh, es es Aeschylus called uh, Prometheus Bound. Oh, <laughs> Prometheus Bound. <laughs> I could have expected it much due to your um complex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you should let me just say this. You shouldn't have any trouble procuring a ticket. <laughs> oh, is it a porn movie? <laughs> okay. Surprisingly <laughs> enough. <laughs> okay. Surprisingly enough, they know what porn is in ancient Greece. So. <laughs> That's true. There you go. The, I think it was the nymph called Porn Eye. That was the one who did it. Hang on. Let me look. So this is why I said it, because oh, I knew we'd get some Greek awesome Greek history. For awesome the night. history. Yeah, oh I knew that's why. Okay, fun fact of Greek history for the night: the Porn Eye are the um, lowest class of Greek prostitutes. So um, that's where the word porn comes from. Congratulations, you know the where the origin of the word porn comes from. It is the lowest class of Greek prostitute. So you would hire to watch them as well as what uh, have sex with them. So. Um, these are the porn eye, P O R N A I. So she would know what porn is, and she would say, "No, it is not the porn." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's filthy. 
And I want to <laughs> I would excuse myself from the question of asking you why you know what this is, but a man of your age, let me say, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, well I'm a powerful wizard. I know everything. Indeed. <laughs> indeed, of course. I, especially where to find the porn. So, very well. I'm not interested in no porn, I think. I'm interested in a play, and sounds like artists don't make any money, so... Sounds like this might be an interesting play to take a date to, so... Indeed. Why Maybe don't you find yourself too. one then, Prewitt? The play is not about porn. Let us just say it is very... liberal in its beliefs about the Skyfire, their Zeus. Why does she keep bringing up porn? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we'd drop that now. Herodotus, let's... Come on. They have to have a private conversation, and Atha and I could use some uh, someone not talking about whatever porn is. So uh, we can discuss the boat. Very good, very good. And so we'll start heading, I guess, back yes. to main Athens. Does it yeah. have a Does it have a kitchen? Um, I mean, I'll just say this bit of meta game, but uh, DM Fiat, I should call it, is that you may want to wait for Kara if you're going back to mainland Athens. Quite a oh, journey. that's true. Cause it's really far away. A couple, yeah. couple of hours at least. So. Yeah. Yeah. Just gonna leave me here. Yeah, never mind. Uh, so let's go. I guess um, um, uh, let's go get those uh, supplies to maybe last at least a month or so on the on the seas. Very mm. good. Now I'm going to buy a new tunic. Yeah, <laughs> something preferably with less of a V cut. But before... It was not an intentional V cut. I was <laughs> slashed through the chest. <laughs> before all this interesting stuff happens. Aspasia, Kara will take your hand if you allow her to. Yeah. And she'll lead you into the docks, the sort of, I call them docks, but rather imagine a wallless building that is suspended upon several pillars with a arcing um, ceiling above it. There is, it's open to the outside air, but it is not in any sense a building, uh, rather just a place to construct. And you do see many construction materials around and stuff. Um, it is simply a place to build boats, pretty much shipwrights. Uh, you could call it. Um, sorry, the music's fucking up a bit. I just want to make sure I've got that right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so she will take you and um, walk you to a secluded part of this, what looks to be um, around several high stacked planks uh, where there is a table already prepared for her and two benches. And um, they look absolutely the prerogative of sailors. They are um, sort of splintered and harsh table and chairs. Nothing you'd expect Aspasia to sit on herself. And indeed, as she comes closer to it, she sets out a sort of silken blanket to sit on her own bench. And she sits herself down delicately, letting go of your hand and uh, gestures to you to the other. I sit down. And she says, But Kara, of all the people of your, um, I don't know what to call you yet, but of all the people of your group, you confuse me the most. This should be a sign of pride for you. Of course, I've pride myself on the idea of understanding those that I do not understand. Ah, well, tell me, tell me of your uh, your land of Britannia. Do they have animals there? Yes, many. And what kind of animals are in this land of Britannia? Oh, all kinds, wolves and bears, small, small creatures and climb in the trees and... Hmm. That is very interesting, yes. Wolves, bears, dogs, by any chance as well? Yes, of course. Indeed. Very interesting. So tell me, Aspasia, why have you come all the way to Greece to look for a dog? I didn't say I came to Greece specifically to look for a dog. That just happens to be what I'm interested in right now. Well, as uh, Kara. you and I are about to enter a very intimate and understanding relationship and... If I hope to provide you with what you want, I would like to know what that is exactly. Perhaps I can be of some help. What is it exactly that you seek in Greece? Do I trust her? Like, well, that, that is absolutely getting, on well, you. On like, well, I mean, like, am I getting like a, a sincere okay. vibe from her, or is she, am I like suspicious? You inside, know, like, inside check. I say, must be say in that regard. Okay. 
Ooh, that was pretty good. 11 plus 6 is 17. 17. She seems to have your goals in mind. Okay. Well, you're right. I didn't travel this far just for a dog. There are other things I seek as well. And can I ask if we can talk as friends? Why have you left this Isle of Britannia? It seems a secluded and safe place, yet you have made a perilous journey all the way to Athens, of all places. For you, I imagine, a stranger land as Britannia is to me. Indeed, Athens is quite a strange land to me. Things are not peaceful at home. There's strange happenings. I left seeking answers. Can you describe these happenings? Darkness. People of my kind meddling in dark Magic? magics. Yes, things they shouldn't be meddling in. Drawn to darkness and trouble. She raises two fingers to her nose and just thinks about this for a second. She says, That is interesting that we have seemingly Although unpreviously discussed matching goals, in that you know I dislike magic used for nefarious purpose, and here you are in Greece looking for a resolution to magic used for nefarious purpose. Indeed. Hmm. For Jewishes, wouldn't you say? Coincidental, perhaps. Perhaps, but the gods do not work in that way. And Kara, your land, it worships nature, I understand, as you do. Indeed, yes. Perhaps I can be of some assistance in this regard. I have myself traveled far among the Aegean Isles, and I know perhaps, if they do not mind me saying their name, oops, bit of a musical <laughs> wonder, um, I know perhaps of some who are equally as concerned with the natural world as you are. Really? Indeed. If there was anybody to help you in Greece, rather than the Dodecatheon itself, I would recommend you travel to the Isle of Crete. Crete, you say? And Dodeca, what was that? The Dodecatheon. You know the Twelve Olympians. Vaguely. They cannot make themselves known on our material, mortal world. But there are those that have traded with them, have great respect from them. And I would suggest you seek one of these people out on the Isle of Crete. Her name is Amaltea. Amaltea on the Isle of Crete. You will be able to tell her immediately. She is a creature of goat legs but human body hmm. but her she only has one horn interesting now Do make no mistake Kara this is a being of great power and difficult and fickle motivations so make sure you treat her well I would be remiss not to tell you that this person is mm, halfway responsible for the raising and tutoring of the one that the Athenians now call Zeus. Him I've heard of. Indeed. This you can consider mm, with some different direction towards the world. This you can consider his mother. Oh, all right then. She commands great respect on the Isle of Crete. Travel to the western end. Go to the mountains there. Treat with the satyrs. Treat with the thorns and the nymphs. And they will take you to Amaltea. Aspasia, why do you want to help me? Let us just say that your goals and mine coincide. I too dislike the use of dark magic. And I would see it done with from this world. If that is your goal, then it is my interest to help you. I appreciate your help. Now, 
about the other matter, I am in search of a dog. Of course. In that case, allow me inter- to introduce you to... Hang on, what's his name? <laughs> notes, 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 notes. Hang on. Allow me to introduce you to Achaeus. He is a veteran, actually, of Roman wars in Gaul. He was came here long ago, uh, <laughs> and he was traded many times between several people like a slave. But in fact, now he has come to our recognition and I have been told he exhumes tremendous character, which is the closest I could um, relate to your idea of looking for a dog with, uh, how you say, acting ability. Yes, That's a charismatic. Yes. A charismatic dog. And the, this one, I believe, is the only one that I could find that matched that description. Um, please, um, I guess, uh, make yourself known and... Um, there will be no respond response to that until she sort of looks again and says, a chaos! Achaeus, make yourself known, please. Achaeus! And indeed, already sort of stashed in this area as though she had this conversation planned the whole time. Um, <laughs> there is a dog that sort of limps out. Uh, one poor, severely damaged, already mutilated, if you can describe it that way. Limps out. One eye missing, one ear missing on the other side. As it sort of looks up to you, Kara, and just lets out a very sullen, very sullen a whimper. Oh, Hello. This is a chaos. He is, I've been told, quite a character amongst the canines. He looks like he's been through a lot. Indeed, a veteran, if you will. Like any soldier, he is consumed with thoughts of the past, but this has given him insight into the vigor and the horror that man can exhibit. In this alone, he has been able to, as I have been told, command away with words if you can ascribe such a thing to an animal. Of course you can. Well, perhaps you can. I myself, however, I'm not so fortunately gifted, Cass, um, Cara. Mm. Well, I appreciate you finding such a character. Indeed. I hope this lends itself to a bit of an ease of a relationship between myself and yourself, Cara. Mm. Spill the nice thing over. <laughs> <laughs> As always. Real stream uh, now. It was, was, yeah, this is a real stream now. <laughs> it doesn't start streaming until I spill something. So, okay. so, <laughs> um, so she'll say to you, um, I hope this is easy. I hope this will uh, match what you are looking for. I, I believe he'll be perfect. Thank you. Well, here is to a fruitful friendship in the future. Indeed. Very well. I shall let you go, and when you are ready to collect, uh, unless you would like to take him with you, poor Achaeus, Ian. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take him now. I, I think that's a good idea. Very well. Achaeus, you may go with this, uh, this Kara, and the dog will, um, as though, like, exceptionally loyal, it's all war dogs are, sort of limp over to you. And sort of um, just basically sit by the bench that you're on. It won't nuzzle you. It won't show any affection. But you get an overwhelming sense of loyalty from it, at least. I'll reach over and kind of pat him and say, Achaeus, I have a good future for you if you come with me. He looks up with his one eye and sort of just gives this low, slow growl. <laughs> like a... <sighs> good. Come along. We'll go meet my companions. It sits up and it sort of limps at similar pace to you walk um, alongside you. Okay. Well, leap. I'll bid Aspasia adieu and head back toward the group. Sure thing. And she'll sort of wave you off saying, Goodbye, Cara. I hope to see you soon. At the launch of your new vessel, of course. Yes. Thank you. Mm. And she will lift herself up just down the silk um, sort of cloth that she sat upon and pocketed and walk herself back to the ship. But meanwhile, the rest of the party have been, I guess, um, holding themselves into the back of the cart that they were originally a part of. So, mm-hmm. uh, Harry, would I recognize the dog as a Roman war dog? Uh, they can nature check, I guess. Oh. Interesting uh, question. 15. Uh, I guess so, yeah. That's a dog definitely from Rome. Greek war dogs have a certain different coat of color and gait. Uh, this is certainly a dog that has served in Rome before. You recognize it from several battles fought. Romans use warlocks quite a bit, so. I would have been on the ship 
asking Athon to show me around to make sure that they got a kitchen and stuff. Oh, right. Okay. Sure. They're, they're in a bit of a different area then. Athon and um, Herodotus are on the ship. Um, That's what I thought we were doing. And I'm buying oranges. Oranges. <laughs> okay. Very wise. Very wise in this. Uh, well, not that wise, actually, considering <laughs> Ian is only two days apart either ends. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and I've bought a new red tunic, but I no longer have leather armor. I will do unarmored defense from now on. All right. Fair enough. Yep. You find a red tunic, no problem at all. I don't even have to charge you for such a thing. Easy enough to find. Um, regarding the ship, though, Herodotus, as you enter, you can feel the sturdy wood under your feet, and you can tell already it's strong, more strongly built than any sort of building that you've come across before, any sort of um other ship of a boat it seems like it's well constructed and it almost seems like each log each plank of this ship was constructed at least using the better half of each tree log it is exceptional in its design and amongst the ship you see several slaves making away their business bringing things below deck uh testing out oars even carving new oars untangling nets um seeing to the ram and to the overarching sails as well so, um, Archon, uh, sorry, Aethon and um, Herodotus, you're on the ship. Uh, I suppose I'll leave it to you two exactly what you want to do on there. Mm. Well, where's your kitchen? Well, uh, <clears throat> as far as food goes, we do not have a, uh, a kitchen per se, but uh, this area is where the slaves make the food. Oh, <laughs> what, what, what do they make? <laughs> Well, uh, it is mostly uh, preserved food, dried meat, um, anything uh, like that. Oh. Now, what we can fish up? Oh, I like fish. You do? That is surprising. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll be looking around. <laughs> I'm still dragging around this blooming great axe. Hey, you've still got a great axe on you, apparently, after three days' travel. No one's taken it off you. Uh, right, so... Um, oh, I mean, so I'll just give years. him a little tour of this ship, uh, and I personally don't know <clears throat> the structure of the trireme, uh, but my character certainly does. Yeah, sure, of course. Triremes are very simple construction, actually. Actually, no, that's a lie. It's quite complex, and it's designed <laughs> below decks. The upper deck is a simple, um, almost a flat panel, almost without sides, even. Like, um, this thing is more of a glorified war canoe in fact it is below decks where it really starts to get complex and several different layers that overlap one another for slaves to sit um almost stories that where it would be half stories where people have to hunch over and clutch a oar to row and either side you'll see 60 oars or 60 holes for oars this thing can has a lot of room for slaves to row so but um beyond that there isn't really much below deck there is no um there's very little quarters well, there's very little anything, so... When we get to the captain's quarters, I... Oh, 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 I like this room. This will be my room. Um, uh, I'm sorry. This is, this is where I sleep. Oh, what down there? I'll have that bed, then. <laughs> um, uh, my quarters uh, will, as per the deal with your benefactor, uh, these quarters will remain mine. I'm sorry. Oh, that's a terrible deal. Well, you've gotten a free boat, so... <laughs> well, well that, that, that is true uh, well, where's my room right this way uh, you will share uh, with one or two of your companions uh, in this room here oh well mm -hmm. I hope it's not through it he's kind of got this little well I can only describe it as a stench that is good to know uh, I will not be assigning you quarters or anything you can make this decision yourself Okay. <laughs> yeah, he'll lead you down um, basically a corridor parallel to his own quarters in which lay uh, three sets of two bedroom rooms. So two bed bedrooms, pretty much, okay. uh, which have been constructed purposely for this trireme, a very unusual construction on any trireme alone that they would have any kind of beds. But this one, in fact, does, as has been instructed. You can see, contrast to the weathered and sort of sea-hardened wood of the trireme, these ones seem new and um, freshly cut wood has been used. And you can even smell it in the air as you step off into these bedrooms that seem to be no beds, but rather six, uh, two sets of, uh, three three sets of two times hammocks, pretty much, in each room. Okay, sounds good. Okay, well, once we've done that, we'll, we'll head back. 
All right, sure. So we're going to the um, the cart that wants to take you back to Athens. Yeah, jump on. Sure, absolutely. Does anyone else want to do anything in Prey as well with that? I will um, load the oranges onto the ship, and then um, I will take 120 gold pieces, and I will give every slave a gold piece, and I will say, on this ship, you are paid... We will give you more once you keep us to safety. And I expect you all to uh, remain loyal, but I also do not force any servitude. I do hope this is fair for now and there will be more to come. Okay. Uh, they'll, they'll each give you a sort of a nodding command and a lot of them will react with what seems to be the most adamant of respect upon receiving one gold piece. You see people smile, you see people cheer. You see some people so stunned with shock of gratitude that they can't respond at all. But um, beyond that, you're unsure how that will play off in the future. All right. <clears throat> and after that, I'll tip my uh, my helmet to them and then head onto the cart. Very well. With all people on the cart, I believe, um, you can make your way back to the center of Athens, in which part... Um, once the cart stops, Yarling, who's been with you the whole time, apparently, <laughs> uh, will be taken aside by another attendant and led away. As as she as she tells you, upon being led away, are on instructions from Aspasia that she should go and see something. So, um, after that's done, uh, the Athens town is yours. So you know that the ship is um, to depart whenever you are ready for it to depart. Yep. So, what do you guys want to do? I personally would like to go and buy three lots of incense. Okay, sure. Uh, that will cost you, I think, is it? Uh, is it thirty gold? Is it thirty gold? Yeah. Yeah, I go and buy thirty golds worth of incense. I okay. will ask around about this play, figure out where and when. Kara, I doubt you can take a dog into the play, and I would be happy to look after him. Oh, oh uh, no, that that's dog after my own heart. No, he's. I we are already best friends. Look, I think taking him is is far more important than the play. I, I, I'll just have. Oh, to... he could not limp all the way there. Have you no heart? I, I, no, I, that's that's uh, that's the thing. I then do he will heart. stay with me. I, no, I've got to take him to um, what's his name out out front. Take the him man, out. The man with the play. You're going to take the dog out what? front and kill him? No, no. No, the children's play. Oh, oh, that fellow with the... Uh, yes, are you going to take it to him? Yes. But I'm just going to look after him for now. You can, can go see the play. No, 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 this is far more important than, than seeing the play. <sighs> oh, fine, I will go with you. Look, um, Pruitt, honestly, I, I don't want to see that soldier again. What do you want me to do about it? I'm not <laughs> going to kill him. <laughs> what if you act like you are my companion? A gnome? Why not? I don't think that's going to help anything. Well, you Maybe he's already moved on anyway. Kara, do you value uh, Antigonus's family or not? There are orcs that depend on this relationship. All right, when you put it like that. And I will take care of the dog. Fine. Take care of the dog. What is his name again? What is his name again? <laughs> Achaeus. Achaeus. His name's Achaeus. Achaeus, come here, Achaeus. If you were smaller, I could talk to you, but this is fine. <laughs> yeah, he makes his way over to you, and he indeed cannot <laughs> speak to you, unfortunately. Yes, you are a good dog. Okay, so you let me know if he gets up to anything suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> and so it makes his way limping along, one paw only, on one hand, and no, two, three paws rather, but um, his frontmost right one is completely gone. Yeah, given that he's a war dog, he's probably not much shorter than me. <laughs> no, yeah, he's a big dog, indeed. Yeah. Is uh, Athon with us? Athon. Athon. Yes, I've certainly tagged along. Yeah. I'll see, he, you can probably see me dragging along this thing that no one's 
like carrying for me. <laughs> the great axe? Is that yeah. what you're talking about? <laughs> I mean, um, what weapon do you use? What weapon do I use? Uh, well, uh, better to just. How about show this? You. And, uh, <laughs> uh, the great axe. Um, it is a formidable weapon, that is for sure, but uh, not something I would quite use. Oh. <laughs> Your arms are like mine. Um, maybe we just sell it. Yes, and you don't have to carry it around, you know. You could lay it on the cart. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, yes, uh, as far as my weaponry, um, and he'll summon a spear out of uh, thin air, uh, kind of throw it off. It's got this black leather uh, handle handling down the strip and uh, what looks to be a blue cloth with a blue gem in the in the uh, hilt. Oh. Ethan, do you have military experience or...? No, no. Uh, he's, a, not... he's a fancy wizard. Yeah, <laughs> a bit of both. All right. Um, I trained as a mercenary for some time and I learned a lot on the sea. Is the sea thing new? Because usually when a Roman goes out to sea, it is because he's retiring. It is more of a sending them out to pasture, so to speak. Uh, that was not the case for me. Uh, I've been on the seas for maybe seven years now. Hmm. Many battles fought on the seas? No. Oh, yes, many. Huh. Interesting. Maybe the uh, journey will not be so boring after all. Uh, come, uh, I, Ethan. Uh, walk with me. I'm going boring to... can be good sometimes, but uh, yes, I'll walk with you. Uh, <laughs> do they all have uh, business at this play or something? Uh, it is more of a curiosity. Uh, you can go see it if you like, but uh, uh, I will hear it secondhand. Solid plan. <laughs> uh, town crier, there, you. Um, <laughs> wh where is this? Where is this Prometheus play? Tell me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You approach the first person who looks like a town crier, who is unfortunately <laughs> not a town crier. <laughs> However, however, by pure chance, they do know of the um, the play uh, <laughs> Prometheus Bound, which has been causing an uproar in Athens recently, purely from its both its uh, production value and both the um, difficult subject matter with which it deals. Um, they will direct you to the Odeon of Herodes, which is um, part of the Acropolis to the south. Uh, sort of carved into the um, cliff itself, there is some kind of amphitheater there that is open to the air and seems to be the host of many plays. But right now, it seems to be playing host to um, Aeschylus's Prometheus Bound. Oh, I'm taking this. Has a little flutter in his stomach as he sort of looks for any indication of when when it starts or what time he's supposed to be there. He's never been to a play and does not know what to do. Well. You'll have to find out by the hard way, unfortunately. So go ahead you and there, try. person standing near the theater. <laughs> How do I see this? <laughs> well, yeah, sure. I mean, I'm, I, the only thing I want to make sure I'm clear on is where each member of the party is right now. So how many you've got? How, I just want to make it clear. Who is going to this play? Um, I wouldn't be. I'd be going to look to sell this axe. Okay. I, I'm a lot happier now that I don't have to carry it and I'm just on the cart. So. Sure thing. All right. <laughs> uh, so just Antigonus so far, is anyone else interested in going to see this play? Well, my I'm plan not interested, but I'm going. <laughs> yeah, my plan was <laughs> to go find out when I needed to be there so that I then could go back and get Kara and make her go get Erebus. That was All right, plan. that's that's fair enough. Okay, fair enough. Um, I'm just looking for, <laughs> yeah. like, show times or... Yeah, absolutely. You know, so the upon, marquee. Yeah, it's, upon going to the play, you'll find that there is a sort of um, a performance going on both in the midday and in the afternoon. So you can catch the um, the marquee, as uh, Kara is uh, pointing out there, at around um, 2 p.m. And around now, it is around only like 10 a.m. Okay. Okay, great. So then I will go back to where we left the cart and let them know the plague. Um, it goes on in the afternoon, and I, uh, oh, I wonder what this is going to be like. I wonder if Prometheus will be there. <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> Yeah, that would be something. <laughs> <laughs> going to a lot of expectations going on. <laughs> what? Uh, it's well, there. I mean, why wouldn't he be? I, I, why would? I suppose it's a simple matter to uh, to uh, chisel away the rock where he's been bound and drag him over to the theater. After all, these actors—they do anything for a for a good show. 
Don't you think he's got better things to do? He, well, I, I don't know. This this person told me he was bound, and then he was unbound, and I'm, I just, I, it's, it's exciting. I've never done this before. Hmm. Should I ask for the porn? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, God, no. Okay. I mean, you do have some downtime. <laughs> what do you do during a play? Do you do you interact? Do you you know tell them what to do or say, or do you? I've, I've never been to a play. Watch, I think he just I've watch. Been... Oh, so what if Prometheus is in trouble? I shouldn't try to save him. It's not actually Prometheus. Oh. Oh. And he sort of like puts his head down a little. <laughs> and Dignus, I think I'm understanding the problem now. A play is a performance. You watch, and it is a representation and nothing more. Sure, yes, I, under I understand it's not real, but also, you know, maybe. There is little to no interaction with the audience. You are allowed to shout at certain parts and cheer, but you are never allowed to go on stage. Or throw oh. food if it's bad. Oh, I like that. That's true. Uh, do you have no, any of those oranges? Because those would be perfect. Yeah, some fell away in the cart, and I'll grab a couple. <laughs> and put them in my pocket. Right, sure. Oh, that's, <laughs> or they might hurt someone. <laughs> uh, but Kara, you're, 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 you're coming. Athan, would you like to join? Um, I'm here to keep you safe, as I was hired, so I guess I will be attending, yes. Uh, they, they, perhaps it will be dangerous there. I, I do not know. <laughs> I certainly yeah, well, hope if not. everybody's going, I might as well go too. I think that's a fine idea. Wonderful. Maybe one what? of those oranges, Antigonus. <laughs> yes, there you go. And uh, and Erebus, we must fetch him. Yes, I suppose we must. Mm. As a group, then? Oh, well. Is this a, uh, another member of your party? What was that, Herodotus? Oh, I, better, I, I better come then. I yes, can't carry yes. this bloody thing any longer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, perhaps we could find somewhere to sell it on our way to Erebus's house. Perhaps, yes, that's that's wonderful. Yes, give me the axe, give me the dog. Aethon, come with me, I'm going to sell the axe. Very good. <laughs> How early should we get there? Like, three hours? I will meet you there, Antigonus. Uh, we'll, yeah. we'll go find Erebus. Good, good, good. I will... I will wait and wait for the show. <laughs> and I had to go back no, to No, you're coming with me. Oh, damn. Oh, okay, okay. I'll go with her. He's <laughs> very... So giddy for the first time. He's very... <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't really understand. Oh, All right, so... Three of us are going um, to sell this axe. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, it is as simple as going to the um, tradesman's quarter of athens the districts where you'll find weapons and things and simply rolling me a persuasion check to see what price you can get for it then herodotus <laughs> oh. so how did you all come to carry such a uh, oh. magnificent weapon uh do you know of the minotaur i've heard tell yeah well it, oh never mind it wasn't, it wasn't him. him it was <laughs> 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 what about what about the manticore uh, <laughs> it wasn't him either um, can we take um, <laughs> no. Yarlin with us? <laughs> or is uh, she gone? Is gone. Absent. Damn it! Yeah. Who's our I face? Have... Well, just as the Minotaur is a uh, part ox, uh, we fought fought something that was part bear, and it wielded this weapon. Hmm. I see. It is a strange tale, but I've heard stranger. Yes, yes. it was a very interesting battle. Uh, do you know when you get that look that you know that you are destined to kill someone? Uh um, I, I know it's all too well. It's in the heat of battle, yes. But uh, And so it happened then. And I was destined to kill the bear. And so you did. Impressive. So I did. Well, Especially for one of your stature. We had to pick him up a couple of times there. <laughs> True enough. So, um, <laughs> how about it's what you roll in the persuasion? <laughs> oh, my God. Has anyone else got better persuasion? Uh, unless, any, unless you want to defer to any of your current party members, of course. I mean, it's, I'll, it's your I'll axe, at least assist. I, I can sell it if you <laughs> wish. Oh, well, if you, you like me if to you sell it to, for you. If you want to tell him it's magical. Is it indeed magic? Oh, of course, yeah. Ah, well, we should fetch a higher penny than most. All right. Uh, Athon will take up the axe and go uh, see if he can find anyone to sell it to. I'll go I'll with you. you this persuasion check. Okay. Let me get my... Uh... 
Yeah, no, mine's sure. not as high as I thought it was going to be. But so, anyway. can, well, can him, I assist? Can we, yeah, can we assist him? Yeah. Oh, that is so close to a miracle roll. It's un uncanny, <laughs> but um, it's not quite a miracle roll. It is a good, very, very good roll, however. Oh, so you good. come across a blacksmith who is currently hanging. Let me just sort of the music super duper quick. Um, so you come across a blacksmith that is currently hammering on what seems to be the process of a short sword, but at the same time, he seems to be supping on what looks to be a cup of wine. Every other hammer he takes, he takes another cup of wine. And so you come closer to him in which he puts it down and looks up at you and says, eh, what do you want? Oh, tell me your wine. Well, uh, hey, I'm fine. Uh, what, what, what do you want? Sorry. We came to sell you this magnificent weapon. Oh, well... It's a, a very tempting proposal. Would you mind telling me what makes that weapon so magnificent? Oh, I will indeed. Uh, and I'll start to weave the tale of what I was told just minutes ago, um, <laughs> but add a little bit of my own flair. Uh, half well, man, half bear. This beast stood 12 feet tall at the, at even to the tallest man. Uh, but this one here, Pruitt, leaping through the air with his own blade, shoved it through the heart. It was through the eye, but yeah. It, the, the heart of the face. Through the heart of the face, the eye, as yes. some say. <laughs> uh, right, since it's a story, I kind of want to have you roll me performance, but I'll have you roll me persuasion for this time. <laughs> okay. You want a new one? He's already rolled it. Oh, you rolled it? Sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you've rolled it already. My mistake. Yeah, he listens to every tale and he, he eagerly sups his wine as he does. He says, By Dionysus. This is a story for the tales. I shall tell this to my sons and daughters. The story of the hero who slayed the bear beast. What was his name? Uh, Pruitt Romain. Pruitt Homain. I understand. Romain. <clears throat> oh, Homain, yes. Pruitt. It is Pruitt. Pruitt. Pruitt the hero. Mm. Slaying the beast as Theseus slayed the Cretan bull. No, no, no meager feat. Fantastical in my mind. I'll give you everything I have for this axe. Sure, it may leave me destitute and my family starving, but I will give you everything I have. <laughs> he will um, go back into his little hovel and pull out what seems to be, um, let's say, about 385 drachmae. Uh, sounds like a deal to me. <laughs> I thought I got this <laughs> extremely magical dagger. It cost about the same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you want a magical dagger? Oh no, I was only. Uh, can I have some of your wine? No, no, no. Give <laughs> us the money. Here is the axe. <laughs> here is the axe. Here is the money. And here is a cup of wine for your friend here. Oh, thank you. He'll push across a uh, cup of wine to you for it. Oh, I'll drink it. My name is Bastion. I am the most lowly of armsmiths in all of Athens, but I will sing your praises, Pruitt. Very rare in my lifetime that I get to meet somebody who slayed a beast such as this. Uh, Bastion, out of curiosity, have you already heard tale of a gnome, a crazy man who gave a speech some time ago in the Acropolis? My no, in the Adora. <laughs> the Penix is, I think, what you're referring to. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. Not the Agora? No. Yeah, no, not the, yeah, um, it is a Agora, but it is the Penix that you're specifically... In the Penix. <laughs> yeah, um, That's the Penix. Yeah, he will, um, sort of look down and shows it, uh... Don't make myself up that way so often. Let the higher class of Athens decide what they want amongst them. There's no interest to me. Fair enough. I was only curious. <laughs> it was good doing business with you, Bastion. I'm sure the uh, Dionysus uh, grants you uh, artistry in your work. And Dionysus grants you pleasure and joy, my friend. Mm. Indeed. I'll tell you the as you take the drachma. And he'll uh, eagerly clutch the axe and take it back into the hovel not, rather than displaying it on his main shelf of um, simple mundane sword swords and sort of slings and bows and things. Sounds good. Well, we've gotten what we came for. And if I know drunk folks well, let's get out <laughs> before he keeps talking. Oh, okay. 
I'll take the cup with me with the wine. All right, sure. <laughs> take, his, take his cup. <laughs> Robbed him for all he had. Yeah. Was there anything else you all needed done in the city? Uh, not me. Well, I, I guess we're just that. waiting for a play then. Yeah. Indeed. Swear in. We can swap stories. We have good company, and I'll rub a uh, dog's neck. <laughs> sure. But, um, yeah. It's sort uh, of um, dismissive growl, but not anything that would instigate terror rather than just uh, grumpiness, rather. Yeah. And, and yeah. And I, I don't know how much we want to role play this, but pro- we'll want to swap war stories with Aethon. Uh, I don't know how much we want to summarize that. But... Well, uh, however you much you want to role play it. I want to role play it quite a bit, so <laughs> please go ahead and swap war stories. One each, I'll say. Pruitt, you can go first. Okay, just straight up story time, okay. Straight up story time for a war story. Pruitt, you brought this upon yourself. The stage is yours. Tell me of your, <laughs> oh, tell no. me of your, tell me of your Roman war story. And I was stationed in Carthage, uh, part of the auxiliary forces. Are you, are you aware of how the auxiliary works in the Roman military? Um, not entirely well. Well, auxiliary is comprised of non-citizens. It is sometimes gathered from the province or sometimes taken from afar. It is usually used to supply the cavalry as well as the archers. Romans are not inclined to train their own cavalry as much as recruit them from the local areas. Uh, so I was recruited as an archer. I started out in the auxiliary. It is a cohort that is part of a legion. Are you aware of the term legion? I know the legions well. Yes, okay. So legions are divided into eight uh, cohorts, and uh, the auxiliary is sometimes an extra and sometimes part of this. But uh, I digress. I was part of the auxiliary in Carthage, and we were assigned, my particular uh, unit was assigned to sneak in and spook the elephants. Uh, the Loxodon, uh, they are good at training elephants, and uh, but elephants are very easily spooked. And not only... Uh, did we get our intel in the cover of night, but we were able uh, to formulate a plan that we then passed on. We uh, left open lines the next day in battle where the elephants could charge through instead of hitting our soldiers. So unlike the tight formation uh, that we usually kept, wide wide lines were uh, kept that day, and the elephants, for the most part, charged right through, in addition to most of them being spooked before they even got there. They were already skittish from the night before when we had uh, enacted our plan. But uh, yes, it was a decisive battle, and uh, we've held Carthage for quite a while now, although they, uh, there's rumors of them... Uh, coming uh, rebellious at this stage. So uh, that is my story. What is yours? Uh, how, how about we get some soup for the uh, the journey? What about some of not, this wine? Not here for this current conversation. Oh, I was with them. <laughs> but these two are in a close conversation with them. You, you can interrupt if you want and say that if you want. Though, I was, yeah. It was more of a break off and then it will just carry on as it gets ignored. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Pruitt, put him in inspiration mm. for concentration on Roman tactics and... Um, <laughs> Yeah, 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 indeed. I just read that off Wiki. <laughs> he may have done a, a pop. Uh, I've been doing my research. I'm <laughs> Very uh, apt approach from Romans, distressing elephants from Carthage. So yeah, yeah. Um, no, they did actually leave gaps in the line so that the elephants yeah. charged through. That's very good. Well, well researched for the Roman tactics. For it. Take a point of inspiration, but <laughs> the onus then falls upon. Aethon, can you match the story? Uh, with a war story of our own, let's test your Greek knowledge. And where did you fight? What have you done, Aethon? And believe me, as a DM, I will say I am always open to your interpretation of this. If you say you've done something, you may well have done it. I will judge. So go ahead. Tell me what you've done, Aethon. Um, before I get to my story, though, uh, you mentioned a, a plan to spook the elephants, but it seems like uh, handy knowledge. How does one actually spook an elephant? Oh, it is simple. Uh, loud noises, uh, spiking their food as well. Um, mm. Elephants, they have a very... Okay, and I'm, this is the part that I haven't researched. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, elephants have a very uh, limited diet, so to sneak anything into their food uh, throws them off entirely. This is where you lose the inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I, I think that's a fair, fair way of doing that. Yep, so... <laughs> sure, I'll say that. Very resourceful. And uh, 
an excellent, excellent display of tactics. It's a, it is a good story, uh, but it's, it's funny you mentioned, mentioned Carthage. I was just there, in fact, uh, a few months back. Hmm. Um, uh, I wasn't uh, in ownership of the siren, as you see, it's currently, um, but a Carthagi Car Carthaginian, Carthaginian. <laughs> that. Carthaginian warship. Um, I had been tasked uh, and hired to stop um, some of uh, a civil war from starting there. And as we sailed along the uh, the eastern coast, uh, we were um, down to take down another Carthag Carthaginian warship. Mm. It was a, a battle to behold. Um, and unlike the Triremes here, they aren't meant for ramming, but ram we did. Um, we rammed into the side of the boat, and as both sunk, we routed each and every one of the enemy soldiers. You rammed into the side of the boat, and both boats sunk, meaning your boat sunk as well? Yes, indeed it did. But as us four <laughs> remaining swam to the shore, we were indeed victorious. I suppose it is one way to win a battle, but I uh, have to admit, <laughs> this is why Rome doesn't take to the sea. <laughs> <laughs> totally a way to win a battle. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> Aphon sacrificing a... his own ship, rammed it into yes. a Carthaginian vessel, sank both, but the only ones to make it to shore with a crew of Aethon's boat. Interesting. I, I would be interested to hear more about the Civil War later, though. I had heard rumors of Carthage becoming restless. Uh, I spent 17 years of my military experience mostly in that region, but the last three were spent uh, in and around Egypt, so a little out of date, the information I have. I wasn't told much, just tired, um, but uh, I can tell you later, maybe during the play. Hmm. <laughs> Talk during the play all you want. <laughs> Carthaginian politics. Who cares about the play and the actors who've worked so hard on it? But yeah, sure, whatever. But yeah, okay. That's us say um, I quite yeah I quite enjoyed those two war stories. So well done, well done <laughs> there. Um, so uh, returning to the group, of course, Antigonus. But I think best we return to maybe to Kara. And Kara, your search for Erebus, is that right? Uh, yeah, Antig I was making Antigonus come with me. Of course, so. Antigonus is present as well. You'd know that um, the Erebus family held an estate in the north side of Athens, near the cliffs that go up onto the uh, the mountains near uh, Athens. Um, it won't be long before... In fact, I'll have you roll me to stay. Survival check. Urban survival. To Urban. see <laughs> if you can find Erebus's house from what you described. My urban survival skills aren't very good. Eight. A lot of people only assume, only associate survival with forests. I think it's cool to use in cities too. But an eight is not enough and you can't really find Erebus's home, his, his, his state. Can I help out since I was with her? Yeah, roll your own if you wish. Sure. Natural 20. Natural 16 20. on the dice plus... 16 on the dice. Uh, my survival is pretty high, plus eight, 24. Yeah, you're from Athens, so. <laughs> yeah, I know the place, and yeah. also We're I'm getting very, out that easily. Very <laughs> know the place, know the families of the officers of the Athenian army, and indeed, you know where the one called Erebus lives. Going there, you'll see a walled off estate, uh, several gardens on the inside of the walls. The walls themselves decorated with an arch that similarly resembles a building tiled along the um, outskirts of the actual estate itself. Uh, withholding what looks to be some sort of canopy of vines of which grapes grow but beyond that there seems to be just marble benches and things for which you can see from the uh, small opening upon which two non-athenian guards uh, stand guard i believe this is it all right let's please hurry i want to make sure we get in the queue and get good seats all right well we'll approach the non-athenians yeah, they wear non-colors. They are in simple leather armors. As you come close to them, they both bring their shields across their chests and look at you with a bit of suspicion, Kara and Antigonus. Just, um, one of them will say, business. We are acquaintances of Erebus. And what do you know of Erebus? Well, we we met him on the road quite a while ago and. He gave us this address in case we were ever in Athens to come by and visit. Roll a persuasion check. Natural 20, no lie. <laughs> one guard looks to the other, and the other one gives a nod and says, are you the one they call Kara? <laughs> I am. 
Yes, I heard him singing sonnets about you from the canopy. I just look at Antigonus like, oh no. Antigonus face looks like this. (laughs) (laughs) Seems quite infatuated you, just the young one. You're welcome to go in and meet him, but he ain't there. You can meet with his parents if you wish, but Erebus, much as the family been distraught, Erebus is presumed dead. Presumed, but not not for sure. We haven't found a well. Best you talk to them before I speak further. All right. Can you show us the way? I'll show you the way. And look to the other guard. The other guard will not, and he'll keep guard. But this guard will take you into what seems to be similar to what you'd assume to be a mansion, but from the ancient era. It is a sort of closed-off estate for only one house. But around that estate, there are several hanging gardens. And the gardens themselves on the floor are overgrowing with peculiar petals and interesting sort of plants that bear fruit that you've not seen before. Lychee, passion fruit, an interesting climate here. But um, you're led inside what seems to be an open-air sort of building where there are several doors and windows to the outside without any sort of window panes or anything like that which do not exist in this era, of course. So um, there are several sort of silk cloths laid across benches and um, tables. There is art in this room, quite a spectacular art of busts of ancient heroes and things. But as you enter the room itself, the guy will say, just put a hand up and say, stay here. I'll retreat. Erebus's mother and father. Thank you. And sure enough, a minute later, uh, descending the stairs with a man in a blue tunic, um, sort of a laurel leaf around his head, only on one side, as he perceives you up and down and says, By Zeus, make it quick. Do you have information on Erebus, or are you wasting my time? No, we don't have any information. We This is the first we've heard that there was trouble. We m- met him on the road quite a while ago. Indeed. And what did he say? And what did he do? And have you seen him since? Tell me, please, quickly. He, he, he fought valiantly aside us against a manticore. Valiantly, cowardly, I care not. I only care where my progeny is. That I cannot tell you. I did not know he was missing until just now. A likely story. Tell me, why have you come to visit for him? What brings you here today? Visiting somebody on the battlefield and then visiting them again in Athens? A strange circumstance. Tell me why you are here. What is your name? My name is Kara. Kara! Yes, he mentioned you upon his return two days before he went missing. A strange occurrence. Never mentioned a Kara before. And yet two days later, he goes missing. Tell me, have you come here to gloat? Do you know where he is? Have you come here to gloat upon me? Where is my son? Do you think I would have come here looking for him if I knew he wasn't here? Well, perhaps. Perhaps you came here to rub it in my face that you have abducted my boy. Seemed quite infatuated with you, Kara. And what is this? This green-skinned heathen you've brought with me here. Tell me, what is your name? Your tongue, sir. I shall do no such thing. My name is Antigonus, and I can tell you are grieving, and I am sorry for your loss or whatever might be happening here. But please, we came as friends. This was... A, a visit to invite him to a, a play with us. It was, he was very, he was a very good compatriot a few weeks ago on the on the road. And if anything has befallen him, I know I speak for Kara in saying we feel incredibly, well, saddened by this news and surprised as well with as capable as he was. I sort of shoot her a glance, but. <laughs> Persuasion, please, that. 17 Persuasion. plus, uh, plus one, 18 total. Okay. okay. Perhaps what you say is the truth. Perhaps you do not know what happened to my son, but it still raises the alarm. You had something to do with his disappearance. This boy had led a very simple life among the Athenian army oh, until and past the past week in which he several met two orcs. He met a girl of reddened hair of fire, and he'll point to you, Kara. And, say, and then he went missing. Forgive me if I assume that these coincidences are not related. 
Perhaps we could convince you to give us the information that you do know and we can follow up. Maybe we can find out what happened. Your friend here, what is your name, Orc? Antigonus. Antigonus seems genuine in his desires to find a friend. I'll tell you what I know. Erebus came back to us some um, five days ago, singing of a girl that he was in love with. Some girl, he'd exclaimed, was more beautiful than Persephone herself. Exclaimed that the beauty herself could be no more than that of Uranus's genitals. However, I was precautious in saying such blasphemy to the gods, but he sung such from the balconies, Day after day, until waiting, as he said, for Kara to arrive. But arrive? No, it's you, Kara, he'll say. You did not. But somebody did, and apparently has taken my son from us. We have since recently found blood-stained letters delivered anonymously to the household, claiming that he has taken his own life for the... Lack of love from a one Kara. However, I remain suspicious that he would send such letters if this was an act of love. Perhaps it seems he has been set up. Wouldn't you agree? I would. It does sound very suspicious. May we see the letters? Yes, of course. Artius, would you please fetch me the letters that I've received only over the past few days from my son? And indeed, he will sort of whisk away and receive several very starched, very well cared for letters of papyrus upon which stand the very sort of archaic Greek letters, which do indeed explain certain things. The first letter is which is from some one week ago before he arrived back in Athens, reading that he has found the love of his life. And although she does not worship him back, he will work his heart out to make sure that um, the one known as Kara from he knows not where will uh, eventually become his bride. And together they will father and mother a progeny that will be the next heroes of Greece. Uh, yeah, second... that, that one seems like him. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Grease Lightning. <laughs> <laughs> the second letter will indeed read the same thing, although a bit more desperate, in that Kara has not yet visited him. And this is some dated five days ago. If you can even consider it to be dated at all. All you can see is that it looks a bit more in a better uh, condition. It looks a bit better in condition. And he will tell you, in fact, that this was delivered after. Um Indeed, it reads that Kara has not yet visited him in Athens, as she so promised to do so. And he is feeling the well of grief in his heart, heavy weight upon his chest that drags him closer and closer to Hades himself. He feels himself crawling on the floor in the mornings uh, until he finds his way onto the balcony to at least sing her praises to all those who do not know the beauty of Kara. Um, the third and final letter simply states that Father, and this one is dated, this is the one with blood and stained upon it, saying that, Father, I have given up on all um, hopes. My ambition in life was to convince the beauty that I have seen to fall in love with me, but seeing that I have this Kara and forbaying any other beauty in this world, I can safely assume that I am worthy of nobody except this woman. And if she does not accept me back, then I am worth nothing. And it is bloodstained, and that is the last letter he has received. Does the handwriting seem to match? I make an investigation check. Cha -cha. I'm rolling really well tonight. This is another 17 on the dice. Uh, <laughs> investigation dice. plus one, uh, 18 total. The handwriting between the second and third letter be seems to differ a little upon the pronunciation, handwriting-wise, of the alpha letter, in which the alpha letter, as far as the Greek's concerned, has a certain swing to it, but this one has a certain primordial, easily concerned sort of dimension to it, where it is a harsh corner rather than a simple swing. 
whoever conducted the third letter and the second letter seems to may have been of a different hand. Uh, would I know, Harry, with the way that the Shrine of Hermes works? Um, you know, you have to, to to receive mail. You have to go to the Zone of Truth. Do you have to go in the Zone of Truth to send mail? Oh, uh, yeah, you do. Okay. You'd know so, that by now, yeah. So that definitely came, like, from him. Is it? Does it, like, have a return address on it, I guess, is what I'm suggesting? A bit out of the bounds of ancient Okay, Greece. that's not how that works. Okay, I was just curious. So we don't know if he sent it either. That That would be... This yeah. might not have been sent through like the Hermes thing as well, though. It could have been. It's also indeed true as well. Indeed, as well. You do not. Yeah. You're not sure. Um, I will point this out to to Kara, like the differences in the letters, and look up to the father and say, "I, I think your first hunch is correct. I do not believe that this is the hand of your son in the third letter. See here." He looked down, sort of half lidded eyebrows, eyelids, sort of arching down. Look over the letter and say. What do you mean? Not the hand of my son. No. The, the the letters differ. I believe the first two are genuine. They match up with our story. The third, the blood stain is dramatic. And well, look at this. And they show the the difference in the letters. I, this is not the same hand. In fact, it may not even be the Greek hand. It may be from somewhere else. What was your son doing before he disappeared? Was he just Who in his room? The letters. And that as well. Yes. Who delivered the letters? Well, a woman delivered the letters. We didn't get much look of her. A well-dressed woman, but no more than that. And she delivered all three? No, just the final. Hmm. Can you um give us a description about who she is and we will do our best to seek her out? I didn't see her myself. Only the guards tell me who delivers the letters. But she was a woman, I know the least, and had at least some form of renown about her. But the same can be said for almost all women of this area of Athens. Whether or not she belonged to someone's employee, I'm not sure, but... Would you permit us to speak further with your gods about this matter? My gods? Your gods. Oh, my gods. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Forgive me, there is a difficulty in translation of accent here. Tell me, where are you from? I'm from Britannia. I see. Forgive me, your tongue and accent upon the Greek tongue is coarse and unpliable. I understand now you say guards, not gods. Yes. Well, I can attempt to find the one that received the letter and have him explain himself. That would be um, most helpful. Atticus, find the guard who received the letter, please. And um, he'll re- he'll disappear. There'll be a sort of, unless you guys want to interrupt it, a sort of very awkward silence for at least two minutes. As he is standing on one end of the room and you two are standing at the other. As around this room, there is fine silks, purple and red. Um, Erebus seems to be from quite a formidable family. There is several busts of statues of ancient heroes around the room. There even seems to be a plate of dates and prunes and uh, smoked meats and fish that seems to be laid out altogether, half picked at by now, as the floor is carpeted by a very thin silken cloth between you and him. This room is open to the elements by this point. It is midday and the heat is sinking in. But there is a very warm element of sort of equity, of um, not equity, sorry, um, extravagance about the room. That this man has a distinct taste, and the room reflects that. He's a very, very it's almost like a, a small palace to him. As he just watches you carefully until the guard returns, the guard whispers something in his ear and says, "What question exactly have you?" The woman who delivered the letter, um, what did she look like? Anything that made her stick out? Anything that she said when she delivered it to give us what you can? And was this the first time you'd ever seen her? Looks back to the guard. The guard whispers in his ear again. Some sort of messenger of the higher arts. Seems she was dressed quite well. That's all he can say. Well... It's a very large city, and there's not much to go on here. If if there's anything else he can remember, please jog his memory. Bribe him if you have to. Look to the guard, and he'll simply say to the guard, My son's life 
is upon the line. If you can remember anything about the woman, please share it with these two. Perhaps at least of these will come up with some results rather than what you have given me, which is nothing. And the guard will sort of very intrepidly lean forward again and whisper something. And I'll say, I'll look back to her and say, she carried a bow. She wore green. Not unlike you, Kara. I'm sure lots of people wear green. Hmm. Not in Athens. It's considered pugnacious. Well, if there's nothing else, then we have an appointment, but um, I do hope he shows up and we will seek it out as much as we can. Uh, if you get any other messages or anything else, uh, as opposed to the, the plan here is that he's dead. They didn't ask for anything, though, which is strange. It's just that he needed him to disappear. Uh, anyway. I wish my son to be found more than anyone. He is my progeny, my prophecy, my hegemony. I wish you find him more than others. If I had more information to share, you can be assured that I would rather than me assuming that you, however, are responsible for his disappearance. It is very strange. You, Kara, are the one on his lips before he disappears. How very coincidental, wouldn't you agree? No. Then you say there is some relation between your infatuation and his disappearance. You mean his infatuation? Well, his infatuation not- with you. Look, we just came to see a friend to s- and see a play. We're and yet you have found of- me to ask seeking questions from you. If you want your son back so badly, why is there not a full search of the town? Have you not paid off everyone to do this? Are you not able to afford such, a, such an extravagance? Paid off everyone to do this? Sure, yes, that must be some sort of ability to seek short sort houses, put a poster up of this woman. It would be the yes, first thing that I did. Thank you, Orc, but I would assume you do not understand the intricacies of Athenian politics. What would you expect happens if other Athenian noble houses that know that my son, my only son, has disappeared? Is there something to be gained? By your son's disappearance, if he's your only child. If I have no progeny, then my house falls to the Athenians, and the Athenians will delegate it to another house as they see fit. Do you have any inclination which house might stand to gain? All houses stand to gain. I do not know which lays eyes most enviously upon my estate here, but all would see to gain from the disappearance of my son. Now, if you wish to find him, I've given all the information I can to you, but on the unfortunate circumstance that he is with the Elysian Fields, then I would recommend that you keep it to yourselves. I I will find a way around this. By all means, I... Best of luck. If we will find him for his own sake, that will be our plan. Good day. Good day to you, too. Zeus, watch upon you. I'm sure he does, and I walk away. (laughs) I just follow Antigonus. Keep watching the both of you as you exit the estates of Erebus. Meanwhile, the rest of the party are calm. Uh, Pruitt and um, Herodotus, what's going on with you guys? Well, if they're still telling stories, Herodotus would have fallen asleep by now. So Yeah, they're both sharing war stories. So <laughs> Fair enough. I, I say that point. It's a good point to uh, sort of re- recollect the party. To... Um, Antigonus, you did some scouting ahead of this performance at the um, Odeon of Herodes to the relation of um, Prometheus Bound. Is that correct? Yes, I um, would would hope. Look for a big line because I'm sure that it's going to be packed. You find a great crowd of people, indeed. Uh, many people here are here to see Prometheus Bound. 
Um, but not all seem quite content. In fact, the vast majority seem discontent. Raucous voices and angered shrills reek the air, uh, sort of displacing your ears amongst the usually common silence of Athenians, rather polite. But this, in this sense, in this one time, they seem to have let their furious voices let forth. Many of them are calling heresy on the play Prometheus Bound in the way it displays the, their sky father, Zeus. Many say it is sympathetic too much to the Titan known as Prometheus. Many are saying, shouting that Zeus will not look kindly upon this and he may strike down Athens for allowing such a play to exist. However, the play goes on. Well, I'm used to this kind of uh, raucous. I, I, that's how that works. I wonder if we'll be able to hear the, the players over this noise. Oh. Uh. oh, by the way, Erebus seems to be dead or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What? Oh, that was a shame. I like that boy. Yeah, some grand mystery, some letter being delivered. I'll explain after the play. Come, 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 come. <laughs> Approaching the entrance to the amphitheater, if you are all present, you will see a half orc like yourself, Antigonus, but black of hair, sort of a bit more shrill and scrawny than you, accepting what looks to be stamped stones rather than paper. As he lets people in amongst the sort of conglomeration of protesters around the plane. And he looks up to you, Antigonus, and says, Ah, yes. Never half orc come to see the play, yes? Yes, I would. I require seats for all of us here. Ah, yes. It is free of charge. May I ask if you are performing some kind of protest with your friends here, or are you genuinely here to see the play? I um, show him the little badge I have under my cloak with the vulture symbol on it. No, I am here to see the play. He'll dart it and eyes down the vulture symbol quickly and then look back up to you. Uh, take a point of inspiration to you for remembering the use of your not your Monday nights. That's a very, very good use of your symbol. Hey, hey, hey. Very cool use. <laughs> He'll dart down a look and look back up to you and say, Ah, yes, I see you are here in true worship of Prometheus. Please go right ahead. Ah, okay. Oh, right. Um, if, if, yes, come, 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 everyone, please. Play, uh, please enjoy the play, all of you. Prometheus has many wisdoms that you may find invasive. Oh, well, it has been invasive my whole life, so that's probably just... Ah! <laughs> ah, indeed. <laughs> yeah, letting yourselves into the amphitheater, this um, Odious, as it's called. Let me just make sure the name got it. Odeon of Herodes a vast amphitheater, um, several seats, about 2,000 people, which in this ancient era is magnificent. Row upon row of semicircled seats carved from stone from the rock itself, and the backdrop of it is the Acropolis itself, so a huge stone backdrop to the theater. But beyond the theater, you see a room. Um, the stage itself is separated by the sort of backstage only by what looks to be a room on the stage itself, but a place the actors retreat into. You know this from attending, well, from any Greek performance. The only difference of this theatre is it seems to be just a huge amount of space made for many people. And, and unfortunately, those seats only seem half occupied by people, upon many which seem to be sort of tittering to themselves. You only manage to get a seat around the half row, though. I hate all the tittering. Please just let. Let this be a nice night, Pruitt. Come on. Okay, okay. I'm going to sit next to the dog, so that will help. You, you have your, your orange. Can you see from here? <laughs> Would you like me to get you a box? <laughs> I will be fine. Thank you. There is no box. I have excellent hearing. <laughs> you guys have good hearing, though. <laughs> Upon the stage, before the performance begins, you see a statue. The statue is bound to what seems to be part of the same statue, a singular statue of a rock and a man sort of laid upon it by chains. 
um, you would know this to be Prometheus. As far as legend is concerned, after sharing fire with the mortals, Prometheus is bound to this rock for all eternity, having a vulturous bird peck his liver from every day until eternity ends. Um, the god himself is unkillable, as is many titans, as Prometheus is. Uh, therefore, he cannot be afforded death, only torture. Um, so, as the, the it seems like a statue. So it's a simple statue of Prometheus and a rock. But as the time goes on, the play begins. And um, it is a simple, sort of very barely constructed play going on. And you can see on the front row the figure of Aeschylus, which many of you have seen before the creator of this play, looking upon with fierce inspection as uh, several different figures come out from the wings, or we say wings in Greece, but the backdrop, the sort of room I was describing before coming out. First, you see people like um, Triton and Hephaestus, good friends of what is known as Prometheus, uh, Epithemus as well as brother coming out, begging him to talk with Zeus, um, to respond to Zeus's horrible, horrible, cruel punishment and beg for his life, but Prometheus denies every single plea until Zeus, he tells one person who comes to him, in fact, a woman who comes to him, he tells her one thing that he knows who a matrimony, a pairing of people, as Zeus is so common to do, that will lead to Zeus's downfall as Zeus led to Cronus' downfall, as Cronus left to Uranus' downfall. The cycle continues, and he knows who will dethrone Zeus. The only time to wait is for who will come, who will betroth Zeus, who will Zeus impregnate that will birth the child that will dethrone him, as is common with these Sky Fathers. Unfortunately, that information is not revealed to Zeus, and Zeus, in his agony, in his pure retribution, his cruelty, fires a thunderbolt down at the already bound Prometheus, and Prometheus sinks into the earth. This is portrayed in the play by people throwing dirt upon the statue, from which you can assume means that he is sinking into Gaia, is sinking into the earth, down and down, deeper and deeper, until he has disappeared altogether beyond a mound of earth and that is where the play ends prometheus bound is a simple story the whole time on stage from start to finish prometheus has been accepting visitors it is more sort of a continuation of soliloquies and speeches uh, regarding prometheus and prometheus himself talking about the um prevalence of humanity prevalence of mortality uh but there is very little interaction between two people altogether in the play it's rather people talking about prometheus or prometheus indeed talking about himself soon the play draws to a close and people who are both attended in irony and people who have attended in actual interest both depart seemingly quite pleased by aeschylus's latest production aeschylus by this point being quite a playwright of summer now um they all seem quite pleased with this uh so party as the play concludes what would you like to do um question um did one of the soliloquies explain that his burial was him seeking gaia or was that an assumption based off of the dirt itself the play from what you can assume was a punishment so even though he was already being punished being sunk into gaia was a punishment upon a punishment he wasn't seeking anything. Nothing, Prometheus's prerogative, Prometheus's sort of incentive had nothing to do with him being sunk into the earth. Right. I, I guess I'm just uh, asking, did they say in the play that he sunk into Gaia or was it just implied? Oh, no. It, I mean, it was implied, but in the way right. that it was explicitly clear as well. So okay. he was actually sunk. Okay. That's the part I'm wondering because, yeah, yeah, anyway. He was actually And how sunk. rowdy is the crowd? The crowd's not rowdy at all. It seems like okay. when it's it's a it's a meager production. You've seen better plays, you know. You've seen better plays anywhere. It, in fact, for Aeschylus, it seems quite low. No applause. It's difficult to discern whether it's tragedy or comedy, um, which is a staple of Greece. It has to be tragedy or comedy. This one seems to be a mix of both, which is a bit outlandish. Um, many people leave seeming confused. There is no applause. There is nothing. It seems seems a mediocre production. In fact, the actors that seem to play just seemed 
even not that good. Not good at all. Which is unusual for Aeschylus, who only usually hires the best actors. Hmm. Who would have just been us? making notes? Antigonus just sort of sits and stares. I think his eyes are a bit wet and his focus just very like fading and calm and he sort of looks over to Kara for a moment. Can we watch it again? I think we have to wait until tomorrow. Make a perception check, Antigonus. I and try. With advantage. Yes! Well, I rolled a 19. I rolled so good. Uh, 19 and 13. So 19 plus uh, 5. 24. Okay. The tears in your eyes arouse a strange reaction. The statue of Prometheus upon the stone... As far as you are concerned, and as far as the play has continued, seems to have been completely static, unmoving, as you would expect any statue of ancient Greece of any god. It is perfect in its design, uh, completely nude, but with a laurel around the head. This man is attached to the, at the stone by chains. But as your tears draw, you'll see the head move just an inch, look towards you. Uh, uh, does anyone else see that? What's you going to do? No. I'll look up from making my notes. <laughs> What's that? What's that, boy? <laughs> uh, no, nothing. No, nothing. And I, I just get up and start walking down towards the stage. Okay, sure. Uh, the rest of the party, what are you doing? Is Antigonus walks towards the stage. You doing anything? Still writing. Oh, um, he's probably going to get an autograph. Yes, I I have never been to a play myself. I know the premise, but I is he allowed to do that? I I don't know. Letting Sometimes you can see the actors after, but he he seemed a bit upset. Perhaps we should keep an eye on him. So letting yourself up to the stage, Antigonus. Most people, in fact, all spectators have departed by now, and what you are left with is a figure on the stone carved from chains the stone eagle upon his right shoulder this statue does not move one inch until you get close in which at a very slight movement from his face it just looks down at you without saying anything as upon you entering the stage i sort of look around trying to see if it's like a stage trick is there some mechanical thing making this happen or mechanical hmm arcana i'd say okay uh 13 plus 1 14 14 hard to tell um hell uh, mm. greet greet um What would you have me do as I sort of kneel down, knowing that this is weird, but also trying to lean into it? As you speak to the statue, it raises up an arm, and all of you will be able to see this by this point, and it can actually move this statue that has remained static upon the stage for so long manages to rear an arm up and plant a palm upon the stone to which it is bound and push itself off, separating itself with granite sort of sprinkling to the ground. It lets itself off and sort of dusts itself down, granite falling from where it was attached before you see a standing statue of stone before you. You've seen statues before of the naked gods, fully bared on the laurel of their leads. This one moves with the autonomy of a human being as it looks down, not to you, but only to Antigonus to the side. But it just turns to face him and says, What's your name? Antigonus. Antigonus. Yes. That is fitting. Antigonus, could I tempt you for a cup of wine? Whatever you would... Have of me, yes. 
your friends up there. Let's say they stay here for now until I have spoken with you. Would that suffice, Antigonus? Um, of course. Uh, I'll hold up a hand and sort of give them a stop. You'll hear the sound of a sword being sheathed. Oh, no. It's one of the actors. Is the rest of the audience gone? The rest of the audience are gone. This man stands about nine foot, by the way. He is a statue. Oh, he must be a Goliath. And of the, the playwrights and the other actors, uh, are they missing as well? Aeschylus is still here. No, it's not still here, but he's in the backstage. You saw him go to the backstage. Do I actually think okay, this so is they can't a see statue? The... Or is it actually someone... Make a perception, I'd say, for that one, I'd say. Not a nature, because you're trying to guide your eyes over whether it's a statue or not. Investigation, maybe? No, but you're not close enough. Uh, four plus three seven uh yeah you can't tell whether it's a statue or not but it seems to be moving with the autonomy of a human man. so i think it's just an actor okay so yeah you may think it's the tallest actor you've ever seen that's mm -hmm. it's an acceptable belief to have seen you've seen a colossus before so well, um stilts it could be on any it looks down to antigonus and he extends the hand down to antigonus as though to take it I will sort of stand as I need to and, and reach my hand up to it. Yep, he'll take your hand and say, come with me. We have matters of great importance to discuss. And he'll lead you backstage into a room that is entirely bare except for a single bench upon which he sits and he pats it down next to him. Ah, uh, this doesn't make sense, but nothing has for the past couple years, so please, uh, if this is some trick, I, I'm not for it. I just would rather know now. Uh, what is this? That entirely depends upon you, Antigonus. This may be the rebirth of Prometheus, or it may just be a passing moment in which you relate to your grandchildren. A small illusion that you may have once seen refined to the ravings of an old man. What do you wish it to be? I wish for the truth, and I wish to know what my purpose in all this is. And as you look up at this thing, it's the sensation of looking at a statue. It's as though his experiences don't breathe, they don't change. You just adopt one after another as he looks down at you. And as you say this, he'll adopt the appearance of sympathy. And he'll look back towards the start of the room and start speaking to himself, but also to you, saying, I too know. The dissatisfaction of purpose. I sought long and hard for this. I have lived great many years, but I do not know what I am. I was carved, I was created, I know this. Like you, Antigonus, I am a creation. Something used something discarded creation is not of the typical mortal form that that's what i am and what are you antigonus <laughs> i am antigonus i am an orphan i look like an orc i look like a man i can do things like this and I make light from my hand. I, I, that's what I have. I do I not preserve care life. What you can do, Antigonus. Who are you? What does it mean to you? Do you have a life? Are you a person? Until this moment, I had not doubted so. 
I too see myself as a person. But I was created and discarded. And I do not know why. And I have sought the reason for as many years as Cronus has wandered the earth. But I find myself getting close. This play is nothing more than a rallying cry, a beacon to those who worship also. The god of creators, the titan Prometheus. Perhaps he also is my father. So you would take this play in, in this city and and seek more what? An army? A community? What do you need? Hmm. You still think with the mind of mortals and sickness. Armies, communities. I see I seek something greater. I seek understanding. A purpose of why I am. What what do you see, Antigonus, when you look at me? I see a wonder I have not known, and I have known many things these past weeks. Indeed. I see stone and clay made into a person, into a well, whatever you are, a, a form that can talk to me here and now. I believe the secrets to what I am and the secrets to what you are, Antigonus, lie with Prometheus himself. Tell me, in the past few months, you've prayed to the god of the Titan Prometheus. Have you received an answer? I have received blessings, powers, skills, and they come more and more by the day. I, I, I feel that they are from him. They have its, they have what I know of him in it, but. And in your darkest hours, when you have spoken to him and asked him for guidance, has he responded? I feel the answer to this is complicated. It, no, I have not heard his voice, no. And neither have I. This play is more than just fiction. I believe Prometheus has been cast even from his punishment. Tell me, do you know of a Hecaton Kyris? No, I don't believe I do. Monsters. Even that the gods fear. Monsters capable of tearing them apart. Do you know of a Hydra? I've read stories of such things. Horrible pythons. Several thousand heads growing more with each slain. Do you know of Cerberus? I have seen models made after him recently, yes. These monstrosities, there's a pattern here? Terrible guardians of a place that we, Antigonus, you and I, as brothers, need to find. What happens when an anvil is dropped from the sky, Antigonus? It falls. And how long does it take to hit the earth? It depends on from where it was dropped. From the sky, from Zeus, from Oronos. How long does it take? In an instant, I suppose. Nine days. That is how far the gods stunned the brothers. And when it hits the earth, and imagine it kept falling, how far then does it have to fall to hit Tartarus? I would not know. Another nine days. Tartarus is as far below us as the sky is above us. But it is here that I expect Prometheus is being held. Among the Hecaton Kyris, among the Hydra, the Cerberus. No mortal has ever been there. But we will change that. 
with you, Antigonus? Uh, Antigonus sort of steps back and seems a little overwhelmed by this. You have come to me. This play is not but a beacon. Aeschylus does not believe in it. It is his son who has wrote it. His name is Euphorion, and he is my ally. We seek it out here, an ally that may help us find Prometheus, bring him back to glory. The only one who truly cares for the mortal race. Would you deny, would you deny this divine contract or? Of course not. No, I would. I would do whatever you ask if you are being genuine. Then answer me this, Antigonus. Tartarus, the land of chaos, the land of horror, Sisyphean, Ixian, Tantalus, all lay there. Zeus's greatest enemy, Atlas, slays there, holding up the world. How many mortals have do you expect to have been there? I would not know, but now there shall be one, if that is what I am. The only way to Tantalus, Antigonus, is through Hades. And only one mortal has been to Hades, but none have been to Tantalus. If we are to rescue Prometheus, as I both hope we can, you need to go to this mortal. Find how he found Hades. Find how he survived. And perhaps we can find the entrance to Tartarus. I will do this. I will make it my utmost desire. And I will bring him back. There'll be no need to bring him back. He is already dead. Ah. Have you ever heard of Orpheus? Uh, it's a good question. Have I ever? I, I probably would have I, read I, it in the, go ahead, in really the temples, but yeah, mm-hmm. sure. Uh, let's see. Nine plus four, 13. You've heard of him. Yeah. Orpheus, yes. Um, he was a some sort of bard, some singer, I believe. A singer with a voice to charm the gods themselves enough to charm Hades himself and allow him to return from the underworld. The only man to have ever returned alive from Hades. Upon return, hmm, several places you could assume, and the statue lets out a single smirk that may be construed as a smile, but it is a statuesque visage. And he only assumes this for one second before it dissuades back into his much more neutral pose. But his head, his head is what we need. His head still sings. His head can tell us how he traveled in Hades without dying himself. And where can I find his head? On the Isle of Antissa, uh, the city of Antissa, on the Isle of Lesbos. I have a ship. I can set sail for this as soon as possible. Would you come with me? I need to stay here. And with Euphorion, I can still spread the message of Prometheus. You are the first who have come to me, Antigonus, but I expect there will be more. I, myself, am a creation, as you are a creation. I am not divine. I am something else. But I know one thing. I am older than Zeus. I am older than Athena. I was baptized in the gut of a titan. And here I stand, wandering the earth, looking for purpose perhaps Prometheus could offer to me. And I trust you with this task. Do not fail, Antigonus. 
find the head of Orpheus, and from him learn how we can enter the underworld. I will come with you, and I trust you to do this. Is my trust ill-placed? No. I finally know why I am what I am. And at this, I will do that classic thing that I've been doing and pluck my hand to make it bleed and reach it forward for his grasp. Yeah. He'll grasp it immediately. And I look down at you and smile. And I'll say, do you know the story of Zeus and Prometheus? I have learned much today. And I have learned much from books, yes. The creator of mankind steals fire, gives it to them. But there is so much... There is so much more to the tale. Why is the punishment upon Prometheus so cruel? Why is it so heinous? Well, he defied the gods as the humans might do. Hmm. An interesting proposal, but not quite accurate. Prometheus was, of all gods, of all titans, the only friend of Zeus, he who he trusted. Zeus was Prometheus's friend and they left together and Prometheus was the only one who could call Zeus as an insult. Therefore, it is not spite that Zeus treats Prometheus with, it is betrayal. They were friends. Good friends, as I hope you and I can be. And I shall not betray you, as I hope you don't to me. I can't betray you, Antigonus, because my only goal is to find Prometheus. As is mine. Very well. Return to Athens and meet me here once you have found Orpheus and his head. I have heard it still talks, it still stings, it still sings. Until then, my trust is within you. And if you choose to betray me, well then remember, and he lifts sort of the wine glass to his lips, and he, sort of in a very uncanny valley way, he'll just pause, and the wine glass will freeze to his lips, as though it, the wine inside it also takes on the figure of stone, for a few seconds before it reveals itself to be him again he lifts it up and he'll say i am only a statue and i am only a half orc hmm. well then be gone with you half orc let us see how much your devotion to prometheus will carry you uh antigonus um takes his hand free and with a new energy, marches out towards everybody else. While that was happening, Kara would have filled the group in on the Erebus situation. Sure thing. It's a good Just place, actually, to take a break, I'd say, for like five, ten minutes. Yeah. So if we come back at like um, 58 minutes, 59 minutes, I past the hour. Yeah. I think it's a good place to take that, Jed Lee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Pantheon, and I hope we do see you after the break because this is where things start get start getting um, not only interesting but where things start getting divine. <laughs> Welcome back, intrepid historical adventurers, to the story of Pantheon. With me, your DM Harry, who hasn't had a wee. No, exactly. I haven't had the time to go to the loo over the break. So, <laughs> in that regard, what I'll do in a pioneering adventure of human interaction and roleplay ability is let you guys discuss amongst each other what you're going to do as I get to the toilet. So, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Who would have thought he would have done uh, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So Antigonus just like marches out of this backstage area with this incredible like drive and purpose and he just says um, as he gets back to everyone I need a map Oh I might have a map So we let us hope that the I've got a perfect map because the DM's allow... not here <laughs> <laughs> We have everything right now yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yes, I happen to have a detailed atlas from my military days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Herodotus has a uh, has a map that I would like just spend some time sitting there trying to figure out like where we are and how to get to Lesbos and how to get to where we're supposed to be going to take out the Fericity and you know maybe yeah, even see if it's on the way pointing to some stuff with uh, with Athon just being like. Just, does this make any sense? Does this pathway and why do you need to Maybe go there? Maybe Aethon has a map because he, you know, he might true. have a map of like the islands and stuff. I think yeah, I did have one. one on the boat, um, but uh, we can go anywhere you would like on the ocean. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> why do you need to go to this place? Drive. Did you get your autograph? Oh, um, I got much more than that, Herodotus. I got oh. a purpose. Your uh, hand is bloody. Yes, well, it often is these days. Y yes, based on this map that you've shown me here, uh, if we are where we are currently. I I see that we can get to, and then I'll just fill in the blanks here. But I'm looking at like an ancient map right now, and uh, mm -hmm. so Lesbos is... Oh, it's north. Okay, it's north. north. Yeah, we generally... Being and where is it that we're supposed to be going for to meet, um, or to try to head off the Phericides? Cyrus. Cyrus, okay. It's not too far. I mean, it's it's generally close to Athens. It's in the peninsula of this whole thing, the archipelago of mainland Athens. So, okay. Less is little... actually quite far away. So, yeah. You sound a little muffled, Harry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Figure this out. It's maybe um, the rain. I'm not sure. I don't hear any rain anymore, but maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I'm just going to sit closer to the microphone. As you are letting yourself out of the backstage uh, Antigonus, um, the statuesque figure that you've been talking to follows and puts himself back upon the stone. Before you continue any further, he'll say, Antigonus, one more thing that you need to know. I'll turn around or look up from the map that I'm looking at right now. Yeah. And I'll speak to the whole party and I'll say, Athena, Apollo, Artemis, Hermes. These are Zeus's greatest allies. If you meet a follower of these, do not divulge the information I have shared with you. For they will share it with him. Indeed. Very good. Tell me the gods I said. The gods you serve? Tell me the gods I warned you about. Oh, Apollo, Hermes, Athena, and, uh, oh shit, Artemis. Yes. And of course, Zeus. Zeus himself, of course. These gods are his favorites and will spend anything they can to gain favor with him. Do not share the information I have divulged today. I shall not. What was your name, by the way? <laughs> mm. You can call me Omphalus. Omphalus. Ah. Thank you, Omphalus. And then I'll go do what I was talking about while you were in the bathroom, which was like pulling out a map and trying to figure out our pathway. Sure. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> nice one. Uh, yeah, so so uh, the first thing that I think I would ask was look at Athon and just say, you know, who do you serve, Athon? What do you mean? I, I serve myself. The gods above, you have no allegiances? Uh, I mean, I worship... The twelve, like the rest, you're making some powerful enemies here. Well, if you stick along with us, you'll notice that uh, despite our best efforts, we seem to be always getting into a bit of trouble, so I hope you can take care of yourself. Uh, I will try my best. Um, just uh, Let's just avoid them rather than try and lie to them, yeah? I'm more than happy to avoid. That's sort of been our MO this whole time. That's short for modus operandi, which is Latin. Pruitt, you would know that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> totally. totally. So uh, if with no one else around, I will give them a brief 
non-detailed version of what I was told. And basically the idea being that I got to get to Lesbos and I got to get the head of Orpheus. And we might be venturing into Hades, or at least I might. And I would say at the end of it, um, I do not ask for your aid with this task beyond getting Orpheus's uh, head. After that point, I, it's up to you whether you would follow and do such an idiotic mission. But to be honest, this is what I've been looking for for so long. I think that might be one river my boat cannot traverse. <laughs> Indeed. And um, what river is that? Does anyone know? <laughs> the River Styx. Indeed. Thank you, Tara. The River Styx. Indeed. We're going to make such a good pub trivia team. <laughs> <laughs> the River Styx cannot be traversed by a normal man other than by its boatman, who is called. Come on, party. Chiron, right? Chiron? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Chiron? 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 Chiron. Chiron. Yeah, oh, I, I said Chiron. Is that it? It's not Ch Chiron is a different mythological figure altogether, but Chiron, C H A or C H I, they are both myth mythological figures. Depends no, on where I you're guess from. I, I was I thinking C H I. I guess I just pronounced it wrong. But... C H A <laughs> is the one that is the River Styx guardian. C H I is a different mythological figure. Altogether. And I was thinking of the wrong one. Uh, <laughs> we, we lost the pub trivia game. Thanks, Carl. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> At the end of all this, Herodotus is a little bit confused. He just thinks it was a very intense and over-the-top play that got a bit too serious, obviously, until, obviously, Antigonus explains, I suppose. Because, um, obviously, he didn't have a clue. He just thought, Indeed, it was, yeah. he thought it was an actor. The play itself is a beacon towards all those who would worship Prometheus. And until which a servant of Prometheus would deem himself so confident to approach the statue himself. And then we go from there with that. So cool. So, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, I, I've done what I need to do here. Are we, do we have any other tasks? I would love to get on the sea as soon as possible. I wanted to, uh, talk around town, see what the gossip is regarding the heroes and any preparations for war, but if we do not have time, that is fine. We can go. I'm concerned that our missions across the sea are going to be quite dangerous, and I think perhaps it might be in our best interest to see if we can pursue getting some of Herodotus's memory back before we pursue those missions. He is a powerful wizard, and he would probably be more formidable if he could remember Mm. I apologize for my selfishness. I've had quite a few minutes here. Herodotus, of course. Would you have us pursue the Acropolis to try to find what you remember? Oh, well, I was thinking more about Erebus. Hmm. Another mystery to unfold. When we mentioned him before, uh... Aspasia gave a small chuckle to herself. She may know something about that. How very perceptive of you, Pruitt. I'm, I'm always looking around. <clears throat> as good a lead as any. Well, where do we begin? Do we go to her? Do we go to the Acropolis? I think whatever we're going to do, we need to do fast. I don't want to miss Ferricities, so... Uh, Herodotus, who would you like to accompany you to the Acropolis? Um, it's, it's obviously quite far, isn't it? It's up in there. Up into the mountains, isn't it, Harry? Not really, no. It's right. in the center of Athens. Oh, okay. Um, well... I don't, I don't think we should split up. I think it might be in our best interest to all go. Very well, let's be quick. Let's go. All right. Marching toward wherever Herodotus leads us. And <laughs> this door at the bottom Jungles of the... Jungles around Athens? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, what about these oh, points? Thanks. Um... So, Herodotus, following the visions afforded you by the oh. Temple of Hypnos, you find yourself upon the Acropolis, uh, the same place where the actual theatre is, basically carved into the stone of this large sort of, um, I mean, 
but you'll know by this time what an Acropolis is. It's going to be like, if you don't know what it is, it's going to be an important part of all Greek things. So basically the lo- the highest point in town around which there is a small cliff face upon which are carved several entrances and buildings. So um, it's important we get uh, an Acropolis to find. So that, that is where you will find a small section towards the south where the Acropolis gives way to tombs for the dead. Okay, well, that was good because I didn't know what one was. Um, the best way I can explain it is to imagine what a cliff is and then imagine the cliff is just a perfect circle sort of erupting from the landscape like a like a unbelonging sort of wart type thing. Mm-hmm. And in that itself is a hillock. So what you look at is sort of a cliff face that is a perfect circle upon which things can be built and carved. And that is exactly what's happened in Athens. So, okay. yeah, well, if you look at, even if you look at a modern picture of Athens, you will see the Acropolis. It is just the only point of Athens which is above all of us. Um, well, Herodotus is doing his inspection or whatever he's going to do, or maybe even on the way. Um, Pruitt, well, he was <laughs> going to make a more subtle investigation, but given the lack of time and surplus of things to do, Pruitt was just going to grab somebody that's a passerby and, you, what has happened to the, the six heroes from <clears throat> from Eritrea? What are they doing now? And has any preparations been made for war? You grab the guy, but as soon as you grab him, his tunic gives away and you don't grab anything but a, a loose arm, in which case he looks to you and he seems to only have one arm. And I looks... just happened to grab the one-armed guy. Yeah, you grab a one-armed, <laughs> you grab a one-armed guy. Okay. Uh, and he just looks to you and says, Oh, hey, oh, what the hell? What, what's, what do you want? I, I've got drag me. And I start pulling out like 10 or 12 drag me and start lading it over to you. Useless. Does anybody know what's going on in Greece nowadays? Ah, what, what, what do you Uninformed, want? Uninformed, ignorant imbeciles. Leave me alone. Oh, God. Villains, fiends. Leave me be. And Dios makes his way out of <laughs> love the way of you guys. <laughs> well, that didn't go as planned. <laughs> Grab people and demand information from them. Well, I happened to grab the one, the one-armed guy. The one-armed guy, yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, sure. The thing is, I can imagine like a like a burly human or a Goliath doing it, but you've got this little short-ass gnome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By the collars. terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, that's fine. It's 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 awesome. <laughs> yeah, I guess just, we make it to the uh, Acropolis with, yeah, with yeah. none the wiser. <laughs> is any of this familiar to you? From your visions Herodotus. um do i remember which door it was harry yeah uh, there are several doors in the acropolis roll me an intelligence check flight intelligence I'd say. do i remember the one from my dream that's <clears> the <throat> one i'm asking intelligence yeah yeah uh-huh 12 to so 17. yeah sure of all the um very similar looking plain stone doors carved into the stone of the cliff face where the tombs are if you see one that looks familiar, it doesn't look anything different to other playing members of the party, but to you, it's got some sort of ethereal call to it, some sort of intrinsical allure. This one seems like the right one. Oh, it's this one. It's this one. I'll head over towards it. Oh, and, uh, very good. What is it we are finding in here? I'll put my hand on Wait. it. And whisper the word Sonos. Uh, nothing happened, unfortunately, what? to the word Sonos. That's my note. Unless, <laughs> oh, it's, no. unless it's the other one. <laughs> I like, uh, is it I like to imagine like, he's, he's waiting for this super dramatic thing to, <laughs> to happen, and we all like wait with bated well, breath. In my notes, it <laughs> says Sonos and door, and then obviously I've got Pathanon. So is it that one then? Uh, maybe you misheard the word. Who knows? <laughs> Do you have keen mind? No. Well, then you. <laughs> then what you remember is Sonos. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Athan, to uh, answer your question, our friend Herodotus here is short on memories, and he was given a vision at the temple to 
potentially find some of the answers here, but clearly... <laughs> Have I got their vision? <laughs> <laughs> That oh, is quite my. problematic. Uh, there's no way, no other way to open these doors. Does it, so? <laughs> what, is this a stone door? What is this? It door? is a flat stone door with no perceivable seam that you would open, rather than just a flat slab of stone. So I can't even see a door. It's just a flat surface. It is just a flat surface, as you would expect from a tomb, pretty much. I'm gonna take the pummel of my gladius bang it on the stone and see if I can hear out something hollow on the other side. Um, it seems at least uh, a foot thick. It's a so heavy is there no slab. chance of no chance of hearing that then? Uh, no, I'd say not for that. You, it has the same effect of hitting something like a complete stone surface. Mm. Uh, this may not be a door. Herodotus, were there any other clues? Anything else that you remember? I, I just remember the word oh, Sonos or something. Does that ring a bell to any of us? <laughs> Roll me a history check. Anyone who wants to. I would like to. Sure. <laughs> I'm rolling so ridiculously good. Come on, give me some realistic rolls, people. What have we got? 20. That's 22. 20? 22, okay. And then 18 over here. All right, good rolls all around, I'd say. Um, you you know people who were with Herodotus when he was first informed of this word, that this is the name of a sage of Greece. Like a real sage of Greece, like one of the original wizards. So, so was Herodotus saying the name correctly or not? No, but he's saying... So what is it, the correctly pronounced it, name? He's saying it close. It's actually Solon. Solon? Yes. Hand up against the wall, uh, leaning. <laughs> Are you sure it's not so long? <laughs> oh, sure well, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, at the word so long, the, word, the actual stone door does begin to descend with a crumbling stone pattern, releasing all the dirt that's trapped between the seams of the outer layer, lowering itself to the floor until it's covered by dirt. And what you see down before you is it ascending staircase into the Acropolis itself? Oh no, that's definitely not it. <laughs> Fortunately, Herodotus Solon of Athens was the right word. <laughs> Solon, mm -hmm. farewell. Solos, then? Into the Acropolis we go. It's a strange name um, you've given us. Does it smell like anything or weird or what, what do we get from this? this... Maybe you're trying to smell, I need a perception check. Yeah, sure. See if I keep rolling ridiculous. Harry, are you happy? Yes. 15 plus uh, 5 is 20. Are you actually asking me if I've hammered if I've misremembered the word of a sage of no, Greece? No, you sounded quite hammered then. I was like, are you hammered? No. <laughs> what did you say? What did you say, Zach? Sorry for your 20, 20 perception on my smell check. Um, no, it doesn't smell of anything too disturbing. Uh, I guess Other we go than, this uh, way. I cast light and walk in. Yeah, sure. It is a small stone staircase, about single file width, down into the depths of the Acropolis, what you assume has been carved out into the actual mountain itself. Ethan, you can stay outside if you wish, but uh, if you do follow, <laughs> come across the crazy group. I will come, and uh, I'll take up the rear. Mm. <clears throat> I will uh, cast light on his... Um... What do you got? What do you got? A cloak or something? What do you want? To, what do you want? <laughs> do it on one of the van braces. Yes, I reach out and grab your arm and say, "Careful behind us, then." And then you glow. Very good. Rather, this perhaps it is better to have me take up the lead. Uh, you are better in the second, where you can bring me back if I fall. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's a good point. Would you? Would you like some light? Uh, either way. Uh, uh, I cast it on an item that he's wearing or something. Sword. Yeah. yeah, easily enough done. You let yourself down into a very small constructed chamber. Um, several pillars lay upon here, trying to keep up the immense amount of weight upon you, which is the Acropolis, the Temple of Athena, the Parthenon itself. But you are deep in the earth, and the pillars that are there seem to be simply for show. As on the far side of the chamber, 
you see a door, but there is a statue against it, which is pushing against it. It almost seems like a sort of rugby tackle, uh, rugby tackle, a sort of shoving his shoulder against the stone door. Uh, but the statue is caught in pure form. It does not move. Um, everything else in the tomb seems silent and dead. So that that statue holding back a door is on the far end, not yes, where we entered. Exactly. Yeah, where you went. No, it's where you went. No, you entered and you saw it on the far end. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a tomb. Is are there many graves here? Uh, no, none at all. How do we know it's a tomb? Did you did you say tomb? Or did I? Just it is, well, it, but I assume Herodotus <laughs> may have shared the information at this point. This is a tomb. No, I, I so one of that. He would have forgotten. Oh, okay. <laughs> it just seems like some in, 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 innocuous <laughs> random chamber carved into the stones beneath the earth. Then. Oh yes, this is definitely. I have a to tomb. guess this was Solon's outhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I'm just kidding. Well, let, let, let me do some preparation. I will cast Mage Armor. <laughs> okay, Mage Armor. As that lasts for the day. And how does one find memories down in a uh, room like this? Well, maybe visiting a familiar site will uh, rejog some memories, and uh, clearly this is something from Herodotus' past. So, anything jogging memories, Herodotus? <laughs> oh, excuse me. I was I was casting a spell. Um, I'll look around. I'll look, just look around and just investigate the area. Okay. Um, nothing is ringing of your memories, unfortunately. There. Uh, oh, no, we're good. We can we can go. Um, Pruitt is going to go up to the statue holding back the door. Um, does the statue seem to um, remind him of any... Like, is this a statue of something, or is this more functional? It's almost... Uh, you could call it functional in design. It's, it seems almost like a um, very barely cast figure of a humanoid, upon which sits the words, Students of Solon enter. Says here, students of Solon enter. Hey, Herodotus, uh, well, you are not that old. You didn't study under Solon, but perhaps you could be counted as one of his students. I don't know. Did I? I don't know. <laughs> Certainly not. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, that's a ridiculous thing. Um, I'll just. Have I read anything well. by Solon? Um, no, I'd say. N you can roll a very high DC history check just in oh. case. I'm going to spend some time casting to 25. 25 is pretty good. You know Solon to be one of the sages of Greece, one of the wizards. And indeed, he is the um, wizard most associated with enchantment magic. Well, I've read a bit about Solon. Perhaps it is enough to qualify me as a student, but I still do not know how to open this door. I'm just going to knock on the door. <laughs> yeah, knocking on the door elicits no response, unfortunately. Did you hear the room stays so silent. Did you hear me when I said about the Detect Magic? I know Zoom could be a bit of a git for me right now. Um, if you cast Detect Magic over 10 minutes, is ten, that right? Yep, 10 minutes, yeah. Uh, well, is anything else want to be doing? Does anyone else want to be doing anything in 10 minutes? So? Uh, so the statue is like blocking the door from our side so we can't get at it? Effectively holding up its arms against it so you can't open it. Do Does the statue uh, seem attached to the floor? It seems, mm, yeah, attached to the floor. Yeah, most likely, yeah. Sorry, what were you saying, Nick? Or... Do you want to just try and give it the push? Why not? I'm concentrating right. away in it, and I was sort of, well, oh, uh, uh, there was something that like Parthenon, Parthenon. <laughs> the Parthenon is, it's what we're. I don't, I'm not sure that that's a code. Um, yeah, let's try to push this thing. Uh, just all together, all try to us, shove yeah. it. <laughs> all right. Trying to, trying to shove the statue, you'll hear footsteps coming down from the um, place in which you entered. And at that point, 
let me just make sure I have this correct because I need you all to roll initiative. <gasps> Holy shit. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> hold another one on us, guys. Yeah. For an exception. It's okay, fight. guys. I'm, I'm sure there's nothing dangerous in an ancient sage uh, tomb. So. In, indeed. Uh, let me put all everybody on the map where I assume them to be. And then people can change their positions as well. I imagine Pruitt's getting between the statue and the door to just kind of push off with his legs. <laughs> I was hoping somebody would get the idea, but no. Okay, here we go. Uh, right, so uh, we've got it's Aethon and Herodotus. Uh, everyone else who's rolled needs to tell me. Oh, right. Uh, let me pull it up. Oh, did I roll? Ah, oh, jeez, dang it. <laughs> Oh, wow, look at those initiative rolls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing but the best. And if you wanted to avoid any kind of stereotype about Satanism, we certainly did not do that. <laughs> six, six, six. Indeed. Oh, is there a third six in there? Yeah, mine was a six as well. Oh, no. <laughs> Get your kicks. I'll root six to six. Six, okay. Right, so I've got Athan and Robert Amy. That's all set. So, descending <laughs> order, and then I roll my own, which let me roll manually. Um, is a plus two. Okay, not much. I'm sure there's no chance of anything out speeding us in the initiative order at this point. <laughs> well, we'll soon see, because I'll add them to the turn order at a order of my. My no, my knowledge, not you guys. So, Aethon, your turn first. What would you like to do? As you hear footsteps coming down the stairs, and they seem like aggressive footsteps. <laughs> um, that's a very ambiguous question. So, <laughs> well, we've rolled initiative. <laughs> well, you've rolled initiative. What do you perceive? How did how how's the effort with the door going? Or does it budget at all? Uh, not at all. No. It seems we have company. We weren't expecting anyone, right? No, I don't believe so. No! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Athon will just let go of the door and uh, start moving towards uh, the entrance. Probably just go here, uh, slink behind this column, uh, and stick to the shadows uh, and take the hide action. Hide action, okay. Well, then, I can add them to the turn order at turn order 14, which is what they will go upon. I'm still only seeing three people in the initiative. Yeah, I'm only seeing three as well since we changed that. Yeah, it's, be it's because... Oh, I don't know why you can see three only. It's weird. Yeah. I could just see but the sixes. That's I it. will happily tell you when it's your turn. I'm not sure why Roll20 is doing that to you. I rolled everyone on the same map, so... Uh, oh. Uh, like, Roll20's map decisions are out of this world crazy stupid, so... If you roll <laughs> on... If you roll before I change maps, you roll... You blush yeah, roll. I did, yeah. But I... Well, you're you're twelve or twelve, yeah. Just right. I can I can see you. I'll tell you when you can remember. Okay. Uh, but yeah, this creature comes down. It looks like a creature in full hot light armor, but almost uh, completely blue and translucent in their design. As um, she seems to grip a spear in one hand, but a shield in the other. Um, but balanced on the top of her head is a simple hot light helmet, but it's sort of balanced at the top of the head. As she looks around to each of you, and she will take her turn to cast um, Call to Honor. No, she can't do that. Ah, stupid, damn it. I wish people would ignore <laughs> that roll, but I can't do it yet. So she will multi-attack, and she'll go... Oops. She can't do that. 5, 10, 15. And she'll... Can't see you, so she'll go 20, 25, 30, and end the turn. So, Herodotus, it's your turn. Oh dear. Um, obviously, I will stop casting to tech magic. I don't know how far I got into that. Not enough to complete it. Not enough to complete it, obviously. Okay. Um, I will just stick it with. An electric jolt for now. Okay, sure thing. Go ahead and, and the, try. The power that comes from his staff seems to be more powerful now when he does this. Uh huh. For an 18 armor class. 18 hits. For so go ahead and roll damage. 12 electricity damage. 12. Nice. Not bad at all. 
yeah, it takes 12 electricity damage, sort of reverberating upon the anomalous form of this sort of semi-translucent being takes 12 damage, was it? Yeah, yep. 12. Oh, it's a ghost! And I'll move backwards. Let's see. Okay. So, uh, Antigonus, it's your turn. What would you like to do? I will try and stare at it and... Uh, what, what? Does anyone know what that is? And then I'll fire a sacred flame at it. Okay, which is a deck save, I think. Or... Uh huh. Deck save, please. DC 16. Okay. Uh... 22. That's a pass. All right. Uh, and then I will uh, probably circle around to here. And uh, nope, I don't want to be in a straight line. I'll get over here. That'll be my turn. All right, sure thing. So, Carl, it's your turn. Um, Pruitt. it. I muted myself. There we are. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. I will take the ready action to ready an attack should it uh, get to my range with sword and shield. But I will also take the time to just shout out, I am a student of Solan. Let me in. All right, sure thing. Ready action shield and your a form shout. Uh, all right, um, Kara, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Um, first, I'm going to move you know, down this way. Oh, I forgot to do something. And I'm going to cast Infestation. Okay, sure. What is that a con save for me? Yes. Okay. Um, that is a 10. A failure, I would assume. Yes. yes. Okay, sure. Um, I take 1d6 damage and move in a direction, I think, or two is that... 2d6 damage 2d6 damage, level 5, of course. Yeah, so that's uh, 10 damage. Oh, wow, okay. 2, 5. And then I move 5 feet north. Okay, sure thing. Five feet north, no problem. And that'll do it. Sure. This creature wails with pain as it is forced away from you, Kara, and deeper into the tomb. But it just seems to have something up its sleeve as it sort of flashes a severe grin at you backwards. Is it called so, to honor? Aethon, it's your turn. All right. Uh, so as it's kind of forced northward, uh, Athon ha hiding behind uh, this pillar will kind of reach into the shadows and pull out uh, his spear uh, and take a quick two steps uh, behind it and uh, attack twice, once overhead and then bringing around for a slash across the incorporeal form. Sure thing. Is your spear magical or? It is indeed. Okay, sure thing. So go ahead. Wow, Ooh, okay. Correct. First one hits hard. Kick it off. The second one misses, unfortunately. All right, so, so yeah. uh, 15 slashing damage. Not bad at all, as this thing sort of carves away what it would itself consider to be completely immutable form. But indeed, this thing carves away a mount of it, a wisp into smoke, and the wound does not heal. As you take away 15 damage from it, not bad at all. That is my go. All right, now it will use its move that I had planned before, Call of Honor. Which means a 1d4 plus 1, which effectively is going to... See if this is a TPK or not. Okay, three. Not terrible, but not bad. Not good either for you guys. As um, she calls out a horrendous wail across the whole of the tomb, which sort of hits the walls and bounces back. And out of the uh, walls of the tomb come three more creatures of almost similar design to her. Okay. Now put one here. One here. And one here. And uh, that will end her turn. Rodis, it's your turn. Oh dear. Um, that's not good. Um, oh, sorry, <clears throat> she's meant to be there. There you go. He will... Um, I'm gonna turn. Uh, he will reach into one of his pouches and pull out a, a, shell, a shell of a snail. 
um, crush it and look at all of them and make sort of like um, these green symbols that get, obviously you know, so he's, he's casting symbols in the air and then points towards them and they all need to roll a wisdom 16 a uh, who? Uh, 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 every, every, six everyone. creatures oh within a 40 foot cube so uh, so it's got to be within a 40 foot cube okay hang on six creatures within a 40 foot cube yeah. <clears throat> would be five ten I can only see four on there all together I take it as just four on there. oh yes three yeah that's right yeah well you can yeah you can do it that way uh an incredible amount of range but what's the spell slow slow okay um Pruitt will be hit by this, just so you know. No, it's six creatures I choose. Oh, six creatures you choose. Okay, fair enough. Uh, can it reach to them? I'd say it probably can. So, so um, what are they rolling? We'll save 16. Okay, so uh, first one is for this guy. You fouled them. And eight, them. they lose. So, I've got to come up with a thing for them which I'll use for slow maybe this web and then these three um let's see uh is that a triple fail I imagine it would be nope an eight and a seven and a nope, nine so two failures and a success uh, how many is there all together it's just four isn't there one summon three, so four all, all together, yeah. Okay. Um, you're f the, the Sword Rave Commander fouled, yeah? Yes. And you've rolled five more times. Sword Rave Commander failed, one, su one lost, one succeeded, one lost. Okay. I rolled the fifth one back, and so... Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So they all slowed. Okay, sure thing. Is that end your turn? Um, I will move away from that one. Okay. Uh, let's see. Twenty. Not sure. Does she lose her opportunity attack because she's slow? Yeah, because or? she can't. Yeah, can't take reactions under the slow spell, which would be an Fair opportunity enough. attack. Yep. Which ends her your turn, I guess. Or yes, that would end my turn. Yeah. Okay, Antigonus, it's your turn. Uh, do I have any thoughts as to what kind of creature these are? Um, I'd say it's a free action. You can roll me an Arcana. Okay. That is a nat one. You have uh, no idea at all. Okay, so then I will just... Um, mm -hmm -hmm. Damn it. I'll yell, Pruitt, back away! And then I'll just... Um, move over to Herodotus and I'm going to hold the spell Fireball at this corner and I think Pruitt is not going to get hit by it. Not sure you can prepare hold the spell as far as I know. Uh, you, you can hold the spell it's just that if the condition isn't met before his next turn he'll have used the spell slot and fizzle, we'll just right? lose the spell slot. Yeah. yeah. You can ready a spell, one. though. It's just you yeah. risk losing it if the, the condition isn't met. Tell me your condition, Antigonus. The condition is Pruitt gets the hell out of the way. <laughs> okay, sure thing. Right. Uh, I'm so. aiming it right at this middle one here. And uh, that's my turn. All right. So that will that end your turn? Yes. Okay, sure. Um, so, uh, Pruitt, it's your turn. Um... Okay. Um, Pro will look back. He's, he's uh, kind of uh, eyes darting around, analyzing the situation, clearly not liking it. Antigonus, Herodotus, get towards the exit and secure it. And he will run over here. Bonus. As soon as, soon so as he is, clears, my fireball will go off. But yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah, bonus action. He will incite this wraith. So let's see if he can sneak attack it. So she has to make a, a deception check. Okay. Uh, which would be her. This guy's the flat charisma modifier. 
A 13. I'll beat my 12. So no sneak attack, but I will attack as an action. Okay, good. Uh, what's my bonus now? Plus 7. So 18 to hit. Uh, that hits. Is it a magical weapon? Magical gladius, yep. Okay, sure. And that'll be 9 damage. Okay, yeah. Uh... Uh, okay, sure thing. Yep, it lets out a horrendous wail through the tomb as you slice through it, and immediately it discerns you as one of the few people that are capable of damaging it. Does that end your turn, though? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll just charge towards its shield drawn, stab over the shield, and remain in that position. Okay, sure. Um, Kara, it's your turn. Well, the fireball's got to go off. I just... All right, I okay. I think yeah. it's going to hit all three. I just can't get the damn thing to measure correctly, but that's a, I mean, I think there's 20, 20, feet. 20 foot radius. So yeah, it's, four, it's 40 feet between the three. So I don't think that that's, they're that far apart. Um, yeah. Okay. So then I will cast that. So they DC 16 and they'll take 27 fire damage. Right. And under the slow okay. spell, they have a minus two to deck saves. Yeah. Let's see them. What they are capable of. Uh, not much, I'd imagine, but uh, a 2 and a 12, so both fail. Nice. Uh, so, they, so they each take 27. Wasn't there a third one in this corner? Did I make that up? Um, right there, there was, yeah. yeah the third it's, it's one right there. Moved. Was, right. That's where the bind I guys, I'm sure I must have moved that back soon, but okay. Yep. Um, so they all take 27 damage. Yeah, you, one more, you have one more deck save, but yes. Uh, they would uh, right, they all take. take that then. Oh, yeah, they all fail. Hell yeah. Sweet. And also, Harry, the one I was next to, you haven't got a will, uh, the slow on, so he would have got a reaction. One of them saved. I know that. Yeah. Sure. So you've put. Yeah. So which foul. which one saved? The one yeah. in the far corner, or the one near Herodotus? That's getting crazy now. This this is a hard <laughs> fight to control. See, I've um, lost one. There's only there's only four on there now. Was there was five yeah. just now? <laughs> what is going on? I'm I gonna, mean, they are yeah, ghosts. Right. Say that. So, <laughs> so yeah. three, so we should have four total. I think there was just an actual. Yeah, I think yeah, there should be four. Yeah, total. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> right. So minus twenty-seven and minus. 12. We know how roll. Hey, first goes. casting a fireball. That's yeah. a landmark. Oh yeah, I should <laughs> describe this. Yeah. So basically, uh, I pull out this like tiny little lump of clay, and as I sort of like flick it forward, it starts to grow flame, and it spirals over and over and again. It gets just giant green ball, and then it explodes when it hits the target. Cool. Nice one. So uh, I think that was on Carl's turn. That's the reaction, right? So yes. yeah. Is that in your turn, Carl or yeah, Britt? Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's... So. We're around to Kara. What would you like to do? Um, I'm going to turn kind of toward the one that's near Pruitt, reach out my hand, kind of just turn it up tightly like this, and um, roots will start to sprout from the ground, and I'm going to cast Entangle toward that corner to try and catch that one that's next to Pruitt, but not catch Pruitt in it. So kind of casting it behind. This one here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, sure. Go ahead. Uh, is it dexterity save or strength save? I can't remember. It is strength. Okay. Uh, 20. That's going to succeed. Still, it is there, the spell. So I'll put a thing down for it. So you're not restrained, but it is still difficult terrain. Yeah. Uh, with that be an accurate description of the spell or yeah okay cool yeah. right so is that end your turn yep all right Athan, it's your turn all right athon will look uh taking Athan. in the situation <laughs> it I'm literally just gonna say, go either way it depends on campaign, where you are i will say athon so <laughs> so you know yeah uh, he'll look left, uh, see that Pruitt kind of has that one handled as the uh, plants start to sprout up as well. Uh, and he'll lay into this one in front of him and try and finish it off. Okay, sure. Two attacks. 12 and 11. They've got no. minus two, to, <laughs> got the minus two to his armor class as well. So, Unfortunately, it does not yeah. matter to this thing at all with the 12 and 11. So wave is either way and the spear goes either side of it. It does not take any damage. 
Dang it. <laughs> right, which is now that turn again. So we'll go with this one first. That's thanks to you, Aethon. And under the slow effects, I don't think it takes any negative things to... It only gets go. one attack if it could multi-attack. And multi-attack, yeah. Okay. In that case, it will multi-attack or just one attack you. Um, Aethon. Let's see. Uh, with a long sword for nine damage, uh, nine attack, I assume misses. Yeah, it does not hit. He'll kind of duck under this one. Sure, this one will go with half movement speed at 5, 10, 15. This one will go 5, 10, 15. And this one here will go straight for Prude, I guess, with a long sword attack. <laughs> Uh, 26, I assume, hits. Yeah. That was a crit. For uh, 15 damage. Total. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> uh, but these uh, one here also has an attack on um, you are um, Aethon. Yes. With, and to be fair, the one even farther north oh, isn't slowed, so he can take his full movement. Oh, that's true point. Yep, good point. Thank you for that. Uh, so another 20, 25, 30. Still can't make it see without passing through an alley, but it can't finish its turn on alley, so it'll go there. Uh, I spent 11 misses you. That is the case. All right, cool. Uh, that ends that turn, so Herodotus is your turn. <laughs> oh, I look to his left and I, oh, that's quite convenient, and just point his staff out towards him. <laughs> and there's a massive beam of electricity will just go boom. Straight out towards them <laughs> um, for a dexterity line. 16 with minus two of right. minus two. Nice. <laughs> Why are you casting exactly? I will type it in thing for you for 27 damage. Okay, nice. Let's see. <laughs> uh, We've reached a campaign landmark. Fireball and lightning bolt have both been used. <laughs> uh, a great effect. <laughs> right, so um, let's see. So they take uh, DC 16, uh, yeah. uh, saving throw. Uh, let's see. Two of them I got minus two, so. Two, they both oh, fail, oh. and the commander. He's got minus two, the commander. But that doesn't uh, matter so anymore. Oh. Damn. So, a tw let's, see, let's see, 15, 27 divided by 2, rounding below is... 13. Yeah, 13. <laughs> so, these two will take full damage, 27, which uh, completely eliminates them from existence. Both of them. Oh, yeah, my <laughs> powerful wizard! <laughs> and this one takes half, so... Still able uh, ahead of you, Aethon is this form that's re descended down the stairs. So, uh, Antigonus, it's your turn. Uh, so, sorry, did some stuff dissipate or did they still alive? All the ones over there. I will mark the ones that are dead. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Antigonus starts to bring his arm up to like whip some fire down and then he sort of backs off for a second. And he simply turns to the one next to to uh, Pruitt and says, uh, just like old times, huh? And then run up to it and will pull out my mace and try to club it across the face. My mace of hunger. Sure thing. Go ahead. Uh, I will make a tech roll. 11 to hit. Uh, 11 is a miss, unfortunately, in this creature specifically. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, that didn't go as dramatically awesome as I wanted. Ah, um, and then as a bonus action, I will um, cast. What did I want to do? I wanted to cast. Um, do 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 do. Uh, spiritual weapon. And okay. So my toss my little clay vulture into the air, and a spiritual uh, vulture will. Fly, swoop down and peck this one in the li in its where maybe its liver would be. <laughs> in its spectral liver. <laughs> right, I go ahead and roll me a spiritual weapon attack. God, I'm ah uh, yeah. Okay. An um, eleven, unfortunately, is a miss. They do have minus two to AC because no, of the one. slow. That one doesn't. No, that one does. Not. Even if it did, no one near its AC anyway. Right. So. Just yeah. 
Yep, no probs. All right, so uh, it's your turn, Pruitt. I'll get a token for this mm, vulture. Okay, um, still shield up, sword over the shield. Um, Pro will side glance at Antigonus. Get to the exit and got it all. You'll get us surrounded again. And uh, with that um, bonus action, Pro will rage. Um, Antigonus, could I could I request a perception check? Or... <laughs> nah, not quite how it works. Okay. It? Uh, okay. Well, you'll out. notice. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you'll notice um, small tusks uh, begin to grow in Pruitt's mouth. Ooh. And he kind of seems to bristle, if you will, as he rages. But yeah, that'll be his bonus action. And uh, action will be a two attack, of course. <laughs> uh, 19 to hit. Uh, 19 is a hit, yep. Okay, and this one's sneak attack. Uh, 13 magical piercing very nice indeed yep uh, slices it through takes out some sort of incorporeal form at least wavering away like smoke on your gladius how does that end your turn or uh, th it killed it you said not at all no then no he'll stay there and that's the end of his turn yeah okay uh, so car it's your turn what would you like to do I'm gonna stay where I am and look toward the one that's in front of um, Athon. Okay. And she will raise her hand up toward the ceiling and a light sort of wispy moonlight kind of glow will form on her hand. And then she'll just pull it down really fast and a giant beam of moonlight will come striking down from the ceiling onto him. I'm casting moonbeam. Okay, sure thing. I'll make a little token for that or at least a shape on this one here is that a con save for me yes okay um 23 so i take half damage yeah what's the uh, damage i take i rolled 13 so six. a six damage for that particular ghostly apparition apparition um i'm not saying it's a ghost at all but there you go uh, this thing sort of starts to look up at the sky and takes a sort of irritant glare at it, but it does not go down. So, is that in your turn? Um, yeah. yeah. All right. So, Aethon, it's your turn. So, as the the lightning bolt streaks across in front of him and, and the moonlight uh, slams down from the ceiling, uh, he'll start spinning his spear. Not sure why you all needed this much protection, <laughs> and uh, take two swipes up at it. Go ahead, man. These are rolls, man. <laughs> a 17, a 17 will hit, yeah. All right. Uh, for nine slashing damage. Slicing it through for nine. Very nice. Sort of still carving away that ghostly form of it, but it is not yet dead. And it is now their turn. So we're still under the effects of slow. Um, let's see. What she can do, she will... Mm, do a simple longsword attack against you, Aethon, for 18. Oh, 16, sorry. Uh, 16 misses, fortunately. Mm. Uh, this time he'll take uh, the spear uh, and kind of laden it uh, with the shadows from the column next to him and uh, just hold it up. Okay, sure. By the way, people under the effects of slow should have been making a save at the end of each turn. Is that how it works? Because really? slow is just one of those spells that I never use. Like, a creature effects yeah. by a spell makes a wizard serve at the end of each turn. Yep. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, it's too late for them right now. But I'll make it at the start of their turn. So this one can make it for this one. Um, and the. Well, this one's already gone, so I'll do it with the other one. Uh, 14. What's your DC, Herodotus? 16. 16. So this one's um, actually not under the effects of slow already. So it can still use its. Mm, doesn't have multi attack. So it'll just go straight for you, Antigonus, with a longsword attack. 18. That hits. All right. Slashes through the corporeal damage you feel, sort of penetrating your armor for 12 slashing damage. Mm -hmm. Question also on Moonbeam. It says, um, or um, enters the spell's area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there. Yeah. It takes damage. 
So would that be repeated? Another con save, more damage, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I missed that if it doesn't move, so that's a good point. Let's see. A con save for the commander. A nine. That's going to fail. So go ahead and roll me the damage. Rolled a five and a nine, so 14. 14. All right. Cool. Uh, right, so Herodotus, it's your turn. He will continue the on so onslaught on whatever <clears throat> and send a bolt um a, a jolt of lightning over that way um 15 that's 23 armor class uh yeah that hits so only seven. So what, are you, what are you casting firebolt J- uh, jolt lightning. just can't right it. okay um so that's only seven damage all right, sure. It does take seven damage as this thing sort of, you see electrical sort of jots going through its uh, body, if you can call it that, as it sort of makes up a form. Um, but that, will that end your turn? Yeah, yeah I'll have you where I am. All right, and taking this, it's your turn. Spiritual weapon will try to fly up and pick it again. Uh, 18 to hit. That is a hit indeed. So it's a seven force, I think. Seven force damage. Is that minimum? Yeah. Cannot. No, that's fine resist a force damage at all so the mm-hmm. weapon collides with it like any other normal weapon would hit a normal human being and it is um not sort of flat on the ground but it picks itself up pretty enough to attack again uh, that's more like it and then i'll take the mace of hunger and try to strike at it again okay my action a eight to hit well i just <laughs> unfortunately is a mess i feel like i've forgotten how to do this and um I will, uh, eh, I don't want to take a swipe, so I will just stay there. All right, no problem. Pruitt, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Um, bonus action, incite this creature, just in case. Um, okay, what, well, my deception roll, right? Yeah, deception roll. Jeez, I'm rolling low on those. Yeah, 13 for me. Uh, a 7 for me, so you do get a, a sneak attack advantage on it, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so if Antigonus ever leaves, I'll still get sneak attack. But yeah, Antigonus, get to the entrance. It will hit me, you idiot. <laughs> uh, thirteen to hit. Uh, thirteen is a miss, unfortunately. Okay, that one is slow. Nope. Isn't it? Isn't yes, it's still a miss. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, is that your ten? It does. All right, Kyra, it's your ten. I am content to just focus on my moonbeam and keep it going. <laughs> All right, I I think you can keep it going and cast though, right? I mean, oh, it's I mean, an I just... if you want to move it, but if yeah, it's staying in the yeah. same place, you can do other stuff. Uh huh. Oh yeah, I mean, I guess I could. I'll throw another infestation at it then, I suppose. Okay, sure thing. Is it a con save for me? Yes. A twenty, so I. Don't yeah. take any damage, no probs. Is that in your turn? Yeah. All right, Aethon, it's your turn. Or Athon. Whatever you like. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to try something a little on the edge here. So this thing is slowed, uh, and it has this uh, moonbeam light uh, encompassing it. So can I quickly spin around it and just flank all circle around and try and, as it kind of is slow to catch up, try and take the hide uh, action so I can get advantage on my next turn? On your next turn, that's fine. Not on this turn, though. If you're trying to bonus yeah. action not on this turn, it's, that's okay. All right, so I'll just swing around, uh, kind of uh, slide into this, uh, what looks to be a crypt chamber here, uh, okay. and slink out of its vision for now. Yeah, sure. Uh, roll me a stealth. Will do. Only a 14. 14. Does that meet its passive perception? What a question. Um, yeah, I'd say it does, yep. Yeah. No problem at all. But does that end your turn? It will indeed end my turn. Okay, so this creature will, having been com- encompassed in the um, sort of panic of combat, I've seen you step away, uh, Aethon, and it will make its way 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, up to Kara. Does, does it provoke? It will... Oh, wait, hang it on. Will... It is slowed anyway, so um, it will not go that far at all. It'll go 5, 10, 15. Does it also provoke? start its turn in Moonbeam. Yeah, it started its turn in Moonbeam, so go ahead and roll damage, Kara. Does it provoke when That's it moves? 
It's up, it, that is up to uh, Arka if he wants to reveal himself to do that. Uh, yeah, I'll take the advantage attack now. Okay. If it moves away. 23 to hit? Uh, 23 will hit, yep. Another 8 slashing eight damage. Slashing magical damage. Nice. So go ahead and uh, roll your damage, Kara. Yep, you got to roll their con save. I rolled 8 damage, so... 8 damage regardless. Oh, wait, okay, 8 damage. It could survive this. Yeah, it might be only Let's 4. <laughs> Uh, it does not, unfortunately. Oh, okay. no. So yeah, it dissipates <laughs> in this moonlight to nothingness. <laughs> what a way to go! A guy just ducks around the corner, stabs you, and then <laughs> and then you're just burned up. By <laughs> and with the commander gone, this one sort of again fades into the wall with an eerie sort of smile on its face, uh, back into ex non-existence, therefore ending the combat. Oh, oh did we win? For now. The hell is this place? Pruitt um, is a little bit bigger than normal. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a tomb. I told you. <laughs> oh, you did? <laughs> oh, shit. Um, Pruitt, Pruitt what is, the hell are those? Pruitt is going to put his hand on Antigonus's chest and slam him up against the wall. I will resist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, it's a contested athletics for us, I think. Yep. Yeah, let me get my bonus here. Oh, that one. <laughs> oh, no. I'm raging. I get advantage. Pretty <laughs> uh -huh. to get off the roads. <sighs> Not much better, but uh, thir no, uh, 14 on athletics. Yeah, as you try to push me against the wall, I'll spin you and shove you against the wall. What the hell are those? Um, what are you? You're asking me? <laughs> Yeah, I'm pointing at your tusks. Oh, okay. Yeah, and they're they're somewhat small still. <laughs> what? Did you get yourself healed from that stupid temple's curse? It doesn't matter. You almost got us killed again. I will have enough of your tactics. You will tell us once and for all. Did you get yourself healed from that curse? <laughs> no. And so I'm the one putting us at liability. You do not hold the line. They surrounded me because of you. <laughs> if I had not brought others into that battle, we would have perished. You know it as much as your pride wants to say otherwise. Without help, we were goners. We were in danger because you left your post. Wisdom may not be your strong suit. You have many, Pruitt Romaine, but this is not one of them, and I'll let you down. Ah, uh, man, trying to decide what to do. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, we don't have time for this. There could be more of those. We've either got to get through this door or get the hell out of here. Um, Pruitt, um, maybe still raging, I don't know, um, is going to try and, again, topple the statue. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> I will look round for a lever. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'll make a perception check for this. Oh, investigation? Or... I thought investigation would be that, wouldn't it? Well, you haven't got really time to do that. Oh, okay. 15. A 15. Uh, there is no lever within sight. As uh, you, Pruitt, start to try and topple the statue. This time, there is a echo of footprints down the stairs. From whence we came or from the other side of the door? From whence you came. No. And indeed, this time, there are two creatures of what you saw before. Both standing next to each other, both clutching spears. And both looking at you with sort of horrid, eager eyes. It seems like the same creature you fought before, but revivified. Having tried to topple the statue twice, these things have come back in force. But... I'd say that's probably a good place to leave it oh. for this session. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm not sure you can survive this next combat. So I'm not sure. I have to make you do some DM fiat stuff, but I'm not sure you guys can survive that. So <laughs> we shall soon see. But yeah, that's a great place to end it for this time. As these <laughs> creatures come down, the same creature you saw and come down initially and summon the others, now two come down and look across you after you tried to topple the statue a second time, which I had to push it a second time rather than um, doing what's necessary. 
But who knows what that is, right? So, yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. Puzzles again! <laughs> Why can't we just bash our head against it until it Push works? It over. Yeah. <laughs> keep pushing it over. That works. <laughs> we're just, we're just going to keep so doing well it. so well the first time. Yeah, uh -huh. you're not seeing the computer games where you're like, oh, we can keep, we can, we can milk this for experience points. We'll just keep fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, damn. Until you farming, die. Farming and, and all your experiences. Yeah, I was just sitting there thinking, oh, damn, we're not, we're not on experience points. We're on life. <laughs> <laughs> no, unfortunately not. But yeah, that will end this sessions of Pantheon. So I'll see you next week at the same time on Love yes, Super RPG. We're back. Yeah. yeah. Looking forward and don't forget, to tomorrow. Party foul tomorrow. Yes. Ooh. Tune mm, in. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, uh, thank you very much for showing up, people. Um, yeah. We will see you to tomorrow. So bye. See you later, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.